the scriptures talk is going to make about you a blessedness whatever stage that child, happens that when man you to attain. whose delight you. is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And God, he meditates day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Ignorance is dangerous. Ignorance is destructive. The strength of darkness is ignorance. The strength of darkness in the life of a man, in the life of a pastor, in the life of a leader is ignorance. What is ignorance? Absence of light. Absence of strategy. Absence of illumination. Absence of understanding. Say amen. There is so much ignorance in the body. We have to contend with God's light to drive away this darkness. Otherwise, the days that are coming will, um, will embarrass us very seriously. The days that are coming now are separating the church into very two clear lines. It's either you know what you are doing or you don't know what you are doing. The disciples kept walking with Jesus. They thought they were understanding what he was teaching. And one time he went up to the Mount of Transfiguration and they were happy to shine and they brought somebody who had an epileptic uh, condition. Have you read that in scripture? And they were so, listen, let me tell you something. That you are hearing truths being told you does not mean you are enlightened. I'm going to tell you what illumination is. Those guys had been with Jesus. They heard him every time. And now they brought that man and were embarrassing themselves, trying everything they knew to do. And here comes Jesus from the mountain. And then they brought the man. They said, your disciples could not heal him. And, and they just stood dumbfounded, hoping Jesus would not also be able to heal so that it would show that their case was nothing special. And Jesus proved them wrong. Isn't it amazing how you pray that other people fail in an area you have failed so that it will show that your ignorance is nothing special? It's so frustrating when you are failing in an area and somebody works flawlessly in that area. It cancels out every excuse you would have given. Hallelujah. That's why they hated Jesus. They hated Jesus because every time he showed up, his life and his actions was a message that frustrated the unyieldedness of the people. Jesus ministers to this person and at once he is healed. He comes into a temple and sees a woman 18 years bound. Have you read that scripture? I'm sure the people had been giving her all kinds of excuses. Madam, Look, this and that and that, and she believed it. But here comes Jesus. And then he lays hands on her and even tells her, Madam, I'm surprised you are sick. Didn't they teach you, all the people who have been teaching every time, didn't they teach you that you are a daughter of Abraham? Did they not tell you the covenant that God had with him? Ah, the woman said, I, I, nobody told me. And the, the scribes were standing there. Hoping Jesus will fail. And to their shame, he laid his hands. And the woman stood up straight. And they started finding excuses. Look at the excuses they brought. Don't heal people on Sunday. Don't give them food. There's all kinds of flimsy excuses. I pray that ignorance will be destroyed from your life forever. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. We never know how cheap Satan is until we stand on the strength of illumination. Hallelujah. Illumination is a very interesting word. Isaiah chapter 60, please. It's a scripture I've been meditating upon, not just because the Lord gave it to us as a prophetic word. Everything in your life is at the mercy of light. Everything in your life is at the mercy of light. Please hear me and take what I'm saying seriously. Your breakthrough in life is at the mercy of light. Your illumination, your depth of spiritual enlightenment, the quality of your ministry, the quality of your life. He says, my son, pay attention to my words. He says, incline them to your ears. Do not let them depart from you. He said, they are life to those who find them. Not those who hear about it. They are life to those who found them. And health to their flesh. It says in Isaiah 60 verse 1. What's the first word? Arise. Arise. Can we get amplified? Is it possible? I like the way ad, ad, amplified puts it. Very, very interesting. I came with a very strong burden tonight. Verse 1. Amplified. I like us to read it. One to read. Stop. Just that point. From the beginning to that point. One to read. Listen. This is this is the prophet speaking. It says that circumstances have kept you at a level. Have kept your family at a level. Nobody crosses a particular line. Nobody crosses a particular dimension. A line has been drawn and ignorance sealed the line. And now he says arise. It's a prophetic call. Break standards. Do something that has not been done before. And then he says shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Why? For your light is come. You've heard me say it again. Not for your light is available. It has always been available, but until it comes to you. Are we together now? That's why two people, brothers and sisters, walk this earth and their, their, their testimonies are different. Like Goshen and Egypt. Others were dying in Egypt. Whereas there was absolute tranquility in Goshen. Any man that ignores the illumination that comes from the word of God cannot be helped. That's the kind of person who no amount of deliverance, no amount of breakthrough. Even if you pour one gallon of oil. You see the trouble with the church is we, we uh, of course that's, that's not applicable here but I'm speaking to the church. We hate illumination but we love what illumination only can bring. If I look at you right now and say, Sam, do you know that there's a problem around your life? I see somebody, I see an altar. Sam says, now you are talking. Are you getting the point now? Anything that excuses your responsibility to contend and understand the word, we love it and we embrace it. That's the reason why we love healing. We love deliverance. Because in our minds, we think it's a faster route. Instead of studying the Bible, I can just get deliverance once. You see, nothing in the kingdom was designed to replace another truth. They all complement themselves. This is why you can find believers, they can go through deliverance, they can have healings, but never able to walk in certain truths. It's always very comfortable to say, oh, demons are stopping me. There's a cause. There's this and that and that. But then many people in the body of Christ, believe me, many people are not passionate after knowledge. I was taught by the Holy Ghost 
that only second to your passion and desire for God, your next assignment should be an, a, an unquenchable pursuit for illumination. You must have a hunger for light. You must have a resentment for ignorance. You must have such, such a resentment for ignorance. We travel around and I look at people outside and I see how people are victims of what they don't know. You watch people all around, victims of what they don't know. You can see a woman sit down and, and please don't feel bad. I, I mean, see people trying to maybe fry yam or do something and, and you see that they are doing the best they know with the information they think they have. They never can know that life can be better. You see a lot of pastors, well-meaning and sincere people, but victims of darkness, victims of ignorance. And I made up my mind that in my life, I will be a bank of illumination. It's an assignment. It's a project I gave myself. That I will surround myself with mysteries like chariots. That on the strength of those mysteries, you will dominate. I've been meditating on this scripture. It says, arise. Brothers and sisters, when the Bible tells you to arise, it means access has been given to that light. Arise. Arise. Shine. For your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2. We're headed for verse 3, but let's just look at verse 2. Media, help us. Verse 2. It says, For behold, see, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. He said, But the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen on you. Now this is the part, the part that blesses me so much. Verse 3. Ah, Kabbalah. Da, da. I receive it for my life. Every time I see this scripture, I know that I will never fail in life. I'm telling you. It's like, it's like you have found a jackpot. He said, Gentiles shall come. Gentiles shall come to what? I learned early in life that if you see people coming to you, Nine out of every ten are not coming for you. They are coming for what you represent and what you carry. The day you let what you carry sleep, you get set for empty pews. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. You see, most preachers just think people like them. They say, my members love me. <laughs> Pray for them and let them not be healed for one month. And they will show you that, yes, they love you, but they love themselves more. He says, and the Gentiles, brothers and sisters, something about your life will make Gentiles come. They will give every kind of excuse. People will say, but do you know it's not your tribe? While they are criticizing you, they are still coming. You know why? Because you see, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something about illumination. Illumination is not a gift. It's a prize. It's, it's, not, it's an endangered commodity. You don't find illumination on the ground. There are not many people who are really enlightened. And when you really are enlightened, the Bible says Gentiles. It's a force. It can't be stopped. Gentiles shall come to your light. And this is the part that is even greater. It says they are kings. See, their kings don't come to your light because they are arrogant people. The kings believe they have light too. They too have some level of result. So your initial light will not impress them. It will impress the poor. It will impress the sick. But the kings will say we are watching. The queen of Sheba heard about Solomon. But it was not enough for her to come. But as the news kept resounding, a time came she could not deny it. And she carried her bounties. Up she came. See, let me tell you. There are people in your life right now it's not like they are not seeing you. Your light is not yet notable, but they are watching. They are paying attention to the transitions that are happening. They are watching your church. They pretend like they didn't hear the testimony. But they need what you carry, but it's not yet impressive. When you continue, a day will come. Look at what happened. Do you know that the scribes, the centurion, they have been following Jesus in secret. And one night, 
John chapter 3. One of them just came and said, Master, look, forget the fact that we insult you. We know, we know you are a man sent from God. Is it not in your Bible? They said, see, there is nothing as powerful as light. Men can argue it in the day, brothers and sisters. But time, when you become consistent, it says there are kings to the brightness. One result after another. You see, let me tell you, consistency is a sign of mastery. Anything you can, any result that is short-lived in your life was a guesswork. It was not founded upon truth. It was founded upon luck. Any dimension, listen to me very importantly. Any dimension of result you had seen in your life before and you cannot get it again. It didn't happen on the strength and is dangerous. Let me tell you what deceives us. Sometimes you are, I've taught you about prophetic atmospheres. You can come into a man's prophetic atmosphere and leverage on his secret place with God and temporarily it will activate some results in your life that makes you think it was your personal altar that brought it. And so you will stop contending because in that atmosphere some things happen. You will now go back and find out you are left with your own atmosphere and your own growth and you will not be able to lift it this is what happens a man of god can come for a program and come with his own depth of spiritual reality and the strings of covenants he has with god and you find out that momentarily that church can experience growth but the man of god will now think is just a new level he's not learned the spiritual keys that really bring growth are we together now and so after a while he will find out that the truth about the state of the church is revealed. Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles. I want it to, it looks very simple, but I want it to be buried into your head. That brothers and sisters, your escape from life is your access to light. The day you find it, start jumping. I don't care what is before you. Just start rejoicing because you are out forever. Light. Light. It says, they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Illumination. Let me tell you what illumination is. Reading your Bible does not mean you have illumination. Cramming scriptures and being able to quote them out is not illumination. Are we together now? See, one of the challenges with the body of Christ is you hear me quote scriptures and it's easy for you to think because I'm quoting them. You don't have to be a child of God to be able to quote scripture. The concept of memory is a psychological thing. Anybody can learn it. We teach children to recite memory verse. Abi, Sunday school. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning. And the, the child is saying it just like, like a robot. You think that child is enlightened? Of course, he's on his way to, en to enlightenment. But he's not enlightened. Many of us are frustrated because we think we have accumulated a lot of scriptures. And we think on the strength of those scriptures because we can speak them out. It means we are illuminated. No. You are only illuminated when understanding comes. When you can draw out the mysteries and the principles behind the scripture, illumination has come for you. Otherwise, everything you have is just the letter. And the Bible says it can kill. Learn this. It's not just because you found it in the Bible. Where it was written by his stripes, I am healed. And you say, oh, I found it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, this is your word. Hold on. You think you have gotten illumination. Are you seeing why we don't get results? Although we are holding scripture, it's unable to. The Bible says that we can make the word of God of non-effect. There is a technology that breaks the word of God and releases the life therein. That's what we call illumination. Two men were going with Jesus to Emmaus. You've read that scripture. And the Bible says Jesus, the living word, the resurrected Christ was with them. They were discussing with him, but their eyes were closed. 
A man can be around Bible, around church, around revelation. You are listening to several messages, but until your eyes are open, you will never have illumination. And the danger is that your familiarity with scripture will convince you to think you have illumination, but your results will show that you've not gotten it, and it will frustrate you. That's the situation with many of us here. So you are spending time reading your Bible, which is good, but there is no illumination. Let me tell you how you will know. You can measure darkness in your life. Start looking at every area of your life one by one. The result there is a direct reflection of your access to light or otherwise. You will have to be very humble to admit what I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Gentiles will come to your light. Your assignment is not to run around chasing people, looking for favor. No. The reason why we are the ones running around people is because we do not have light. The Bible says Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. If you want to come out of the situations that surround your life, the first key is light. The first key is illumination. There is something you do not know right now that is responsible for the quality of your life. Are we, are we together? Please listen. Are we together? There is something you don't know right now. There is something you can know that will change your life forever. I sit down and I look at what the Lord has shown me now. And I look at what I used to know four, five, six years ago years ago and i cannot imagine that i was comfortable and even preaching at that level of ignorance between the last one year of my life i can turn back and see very clear evidences of ignorance beyond my imagination i would have argued with you if you told me that there were so many things i didn't know amazing there are many of us who are convincing ourselves right now that we are so enlightened but your life is betraying that conviction and so it's time to settle down and ask yourself very sincerely do I have light or do I just have the letter do I have light write this word down the mysteries of the kingdom I'm giving you a key to the prayer you may have been praying. The fast. If you're not interested in hearing what I'm saying, then forget, forget about a solution. Forget about results in your life. I really want you to get results. I really pray that we'll all get results. The mysteries of the kingdom. I've taught it here again and again that a mystery is a secret truth. A mystery is like a code of operation. A code of operation. A secret code of operation. In the kingdom, men reign on the strength of the mysteries. They have come to understand and apply. Write those two words. Understanding and application. These are the two things that make the word of God profit you. Understanding and application. In all you're getting, it says get understanding. Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Wisdom tells you it is good to tithe. Understanding tells you how to tithe. That you don't just carry money and just come and drop like a bribe. The Bible says honor the Lord, not give to the Lord. When it comes to tithing, your attitude is as important as the substance you are holding. Are we together now?
So the Bible teaches us that it has been given unto us. Say it has been given to me. Please say it, personalize it. It has been given to me to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, if what I'm telling you enters your spirit and you take it seriously, you will get up and walk. You will, in, within a month, the results you will produce within a month will dwarf what you've had for many years. Please believe me. Anybody who is not ready to sit down and understand the mysteries of the kingdom is a man that cannot be helped. I run away from people who do not have passion for understanding the word. They are dangerous. I rather stay with I rather stay with a herbalist. A herbalist is more friendly, at least he's passionate about something, than than a careless person who has no passion. His ignorance will affect you. Don't forget, people have atmospheres. Right? The same way you contact sickness just by coming close to somebody and we say it's a communicable disease. What do you know about kingdom wealth and who taught you? What do you know? What is your guarantee for a blessed life? I think I'm fine. You are joking. You are really joking. I went to school. You are joking two times. I'm very serious. I mean, jokes apart. I'm really serious this night. What do you know that will make you excel in ministry? I'm a man of God. They laid hands on me. You are really joking. What do you think will bring a crowd to your church? I'm probing, I'm showing you all the areas when I, when it's like a call and response. When I mention the area, tell me the mystery you know that supports your confidence that you will excel in that area. And you will see how we are moving with rings of ignorance. We are just hoping we know. Can you tell me what you think will make you remain in the next 20 years? What if somebody is calling your name to die tomorrow? I come for koinonia. God knows my heart is open. What else? See, I'm opening us up to see the need for strategic knowledge. You see, another mistake is many believers go for knowledge, but our knowledge is not strategic, it's not applicable. It's like a student who maybe got medicine and he can sit down and say, I think I want to attend a, an architecture lecture. And he goes there. And then next tomorrow he's in theater art. He's taking lectures, but it's not strategic. It's not constructive. At the end, he will never become a doctor. So many of us are puffed up by several messages we have listened to. You gather the message of anybody abroad, anything new, you just put them together. You swallow them like a drug and say, Satan, come and try me. And he says, you are still the same. Let me tell the truth. You have not changed. I don't want to waste my time gathering revelations and informations that sustain no power to produce results in my life and the life of others do you know the danger especially as a leader pastors hear this you see when people come they submit to your tutelage this is the danger so if while you are ignorant they keep drinking from that ignorance until the day god delivers you and you will hope that they are around when he delivers you so you can tell them look i've been misleading you here's the correction what if you are not there they travel with that ignorance start their own churches too and the ignorance spreads Hallelujah. There is something Bishop Oyedeko knows that we do not know. There is something he has handled that is producing the results. Are we together? Oh, he's just lucky. He had an 18-hour vision. Wait until he tells you the processes that led to that thing. That encounter. I want you to be tired of lack of results in your life. We don't serve God for results, but you are frustrated when there is no result in your life. In every area of your life. So what gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Many people have said I will not die and they died. So think quietly. What gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Bold face does nothing to Satan. I won't die. 
What gives you confidence that you will remain in hell? Oh, by his stripes I am healed. You ask how many people keep quoting this thing as they keep coughing out blood till they die. I'm, I'm challenging you. Is God speaking to us? What gives you confidence, brothers and sisters, that you will get up and travel and come back safe? The Bible never hid it from us that there are arrows that fly by day. It never said they flew once, they won't fly. They are constantly flying, even now. The Bible calls certain things a noisome pestilence. Right? It said not the destruction that wasted by noonday. It tells you a thousand shall fall. So there are so many people falling. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to probe whether what we have is true light. Or just shadows of realities. What gives you a guarantee that you are going to get a job? Did you know that two, for instance, out of every maybe 10 or 20 graduates get jobs within their first five years of graduation? There are many first class students, two one students, two two students from prestigious universities who are still waiting, joining the queue. Even if they give 1,000 jobs in a parastatal, there are other people who even have other advantages. They have uncles and aunties. You, you don't have anybody. So by default, you are disadvantaged. What gives you an edge? What makes you think you are going to rise? Is God speaking to us tonight? Hmm. Illumination. There are many pastors who give excuses. Oh, our church is not growing because the location is not, it's not very, the, the, the location is, is in a wilderness. Is that true? Is that true? Look what is happening to many families. We are victims of the arsenals of darkness. Anybody can die anyhow, any day. Anything can happen to anybody anyhow, any day. But he says, you will arise and shine. Oh, I respect the word of God. I not only believe it, I respect it. I found my way. My only confidence in life is on the strength. God took his integrity and put it to be released only when the word is understood. Listen, what you don't understand is the same thing as not having it. If I have... Can you help me with this camera? I, I won't touch it. Just show me where I shouldn't touch. Oh, I shouldn't touch here. All right. Can I hold this here? Is it okay? Look at this. This is a wonderful gadget. Are we together? Please, Pastor Femi, come. Come, just stand by my side. This is a camera. Is that true? He doesn't have any. Now, if I say who is better, I know you will say me. Because I'm holding one. I'm, I'm showing you cameras all around. And then you ask me, show me the pictures. And I say, look, forget about pictures. I have a camera. Are you not seeing it? No, no, no. Listen, listen. The goal of this camera is to snap pictures you can see. And I've been holding this camera for a long time. I'm even laughing at this guy. And say, you are standing no camera. We'll see where the pictures will come from. And you are holding this. There are no pictures. Are you seeing that? Who is truly better? I think he's this guy because he's in a point where he even knows he does not have. So his breakthrough can be faster. You, you think you have. If someone else comes with camera too, you say we are colleagues because you are holding camera. You see what deceives a lot of people. Uh, the moment they hear a man of God share, they say we are also we are fellow pastors in this vineyard. We know what we are doing and they will never sit down to learn. The woman with the issue of blood said, look, I, I know I have a problem. I'm not guessing. But the scribes will come for Jesus' meetings. They will come as contemporaries. When he's speaking, they'll be nodding. He knows the law. And they remain there in darkness. And there were other sinners who would come and receive. This is the problem with the church. We think because we have scriptures. The moment I say Isaiah 6, he say, oh, arise, shine. That's where he's going. But has it produced results? Has it produced results? This gentleman is holding a camera. 
Do you know his camera can even be better than this one? Yet it's not producing results. No understanding. Let me tell you, lack of understanding is as bad as ignorance. You can have knowledge and it can be wasteful if there is no understanding. Yeah. Thank you. The more I know God, the more I see how predictable this life can be. Listen, the more I know the ways of God, the more I see how predictable a man's destiny can be. As scattered and haphazard as it looks, there is a spiritual rhythm. Light can show you the path. It says, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I like you to shout it after me. I'm tired of confusion in my life. Say, I am tired of guessing in my life. That you are faced with challenges. And then you say, I think this is the key. You now try it. It doesn't work. You now go back. Do you know that certain challenges cannot give you a long time to keep guessing? If you don't get it once, it can destroy you. There is somebody out to destroy you in your village. And that person's destruction is only at the mercy of what you know that can bail you out. Your ignorance, if you allow it too long, you may be caught up in that tragedy. Are we together? This is what I tell myself all the time. Joshua Selman, you must get rid of ignorance and confusion in your life. And the key is the word of God. Listen, listen, listen. No other, no other instrument can give you true light outside the word of God. Make no mistakes about it. I've read a lot of books. I've read psychology books. I've read business books. I've read all kinds of things. Any principle or thought that is not consistent with the word of God is going to add to your confusion and ultimately waste your life. Because there are people who are trying to get enlightenment outside the world. The Bible calls their light darkness. Are we together now? I, I see a lot of people teach and talk and is even stepping into the church. Whenever we are teaching certain things, especially about success, we, we push the word of God out and we say, just leave Bible, this one, we are now talking common sense. Anything outside the word of God is going to confuse your life. What is contained in this word? Mysteries. Mysteries. Keys. Kabbalah Tayada keys that open doors these are ancient keys brothers and sisters those see there is no door in your life that has not been opened by somebody before the bible lists them in hebrews chapter 11 men who had these keys and did so many great things knowledge say it again i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing we are guessing over our finances. We are guessing over ministry. We are guessing over the anointing. I think I'm anointed. No, you are not. If you are anointed, there should be an evidence. If there is no evidence, you are not. Calm down and look for the keys. Hallelujah. If what happened to you last year remains with you this year, then it's your fault. We must contend for light. Everybody say there is a light that can deliver me. Everybody said there is a key that can open that door. Brothers and sisters, there is no door that is made without a key. But every door is at the mercy of the key. He said, I have given to, it's been given to you to know the mysteries. The mysteries of the kingdom. What keeps you in divine health? Look at sicknesses flying all around. You enter a restaurant, you don't even know where they got the water from. And you are eating and you are happy and you are running around and you want to live long right now there are all kinds of documentaries that almost call everything bad i saw one that said microwave causes cancer for god's sake me that has to microwave food almost every day so that means i'm going to die young 
what do you understand by the life of God when the Bible says great is the mystery of godliness that God can dwell in a man have you caught the his, the, the revelation of that truth that God can dwell in a man that God can dwell in a man let's take our finances for instance at least this concerns us what do you know about your finances or are you hoping that one day you will be blessed that's a costly hope sister do you have any shorty that a man is going to come and carry you believe me if all you have is that i'm fine or i'm in a place where there are gentlemen you are joking see let me tell you something knowledge truly kills fear uh, stand up pastor femi stand up promise watch these guys please sit down sit down were you afraid of sitting did you turn back to even check you know why because they are sitting based on an enlightenment they know what this chair can do are we together now they know that this chair can take their weight they are not thinking about it I'm not holding this mic wondering if it will shock me. I don't expect it to. Are we together now? I'm not holding this, trusting it to scatter. No, 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 no. This guy is not playing this keyboard hoping that the sound will just stop. He knows it should continue because he's playing it with knowledge. I gave an example last year, I think when I was teaching. I don't know if he was here or another meeting. If I call somebody who cannot play this keyboard and I say sit down, Look how wonderful what he's playing is. Are we together now? That person who doesn't know how to play keyboard. Cameraman, come. Uh, do you know how to play keyboard? Don't waste our time. Come. All right, Mike, please stand up quickly. Just do whatever you think you know to do. Quickly. One minute. Now, let's see. Look at me. How many of you know that this keyboard is absolutely obedient? It will produce any sound. Now, play anything. Go ahead. You may be making sense. Go ahead. All right, watch this. Now, this guy thinks the problem is the keyboard. Are we together now? Because he doesn't believe anything is wrong with him. Ah, why are these kids not doing, why are they not playing like this? The problem is never the keyboard. The keyboard was designed to be played, but it has rules. There is a rhythm. You see the keys, black, white, everything scattered. All right okay thank you thank you go and do your job <laughs> all right so mike play please play something same keyboard same church same ministry same business same academics same nigeria play go ahead anything same keyboard that guy said his government that guy said is 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 nigeria that is not giving job that guy says machines that cause cancer. I mean, look at this. Listen, the Bible. Now, watch this. When everybody's in a pool of ignorance and one person stands out, what do you think will happen? The world was designed to not ignore spectacular things. It's impossible for a thing to be spectacular and not draw attention. Are we together now? Is your life spectacular enough to draw everyone, including your destiny helpers? Those who can say, look, Benga, come and take five plots of land. I just want you to be around me because there is a testimony that you carry something that is notable. My goodness. Life will become so cheap for you when you pay the price to carry light. You see, access to illumination is truly a sign of God's love because not everyone, listen, not everyone will have the opportunity to go to school. Not everyone will have the opportunity to learn English. Not everyone will have the opportunity to be born by rich parents. But everybody can have access to illumination. And brothers and sisters, when you find it, it will change your life forever. I kept thinking about this really. And I was telling myself, oh God, can you make the lives of your people so predictable? 
absolutely predictable absolutely predictable see one of the one of the indices for measuring favor is is um the bible calls it it says you will be a delightsome land people like to be around you because they have a track record that something happens to them every time they are close to you i like getting close to the ma welfare mama because something happens to me every time are we together now? <laughs> who is seeking you for what you carry is it not surprising you that you are a nuisance to everybody around you they started it quietly but now they are open about it everybody is telling you you are really a nuisance to me pastors who is seeking you who calls your phone and will not mind calling it hundred times because he knows that if you pick his problem dies who is willing to pick your call that even if you say i don't have credit say no problem me i have money it's, it's, i need light they sought for jesus to a point that people tore zinc they knew they could negotiate with the owner of the house later on who has been that desperate about your grace who has coveted your anointing so bad they can pay anything for it? Light. Who has defended you in the presence of your enemies because of the degree of impact you have made in his life? And the person has said, I will never hear anybody talk against Sam. What Sam has done to my life, even when they are right, I will fight them. Hi. See, brothers and sisters, there are cheap pathways you can find in this scripture and build yourself out of this wicked world everyone say illumination say understanding there is something we all do not know that is responsible for where we are the problem is we are too arrogant to learn we are too pompous to admit the fact that there is something we do not know. How many young people brag around because they read one Brian Tracy book and they say, I'm a financial expert. You see that? There is so much ignorance in our generation. I'm speaking to people inside and outside. So much ignorance in our generation, spiritually. Every man of God believes him too. He's a captain of his own, even if there's no result. And everybody comes and once you can join one scripture and just say, this. I don't say it in a cynical way. I know the things that are not in my life and I'm desperately pursuing them with every sense of humility and hunger. And even if it is one of our little ones here that have, it will not cost me anything to kneel down and say, show me the way. This is what we do not have. This is one thing I respect about this man of God. I'm sorry I have to use you, pastor. This is, this is, this is an elderly man. But the humility, this man has pursued me like, like I don't even know what to say. I was shocked seeing him. I said it again, the day, I, the day he came over to my place and I was talking, I mean, these people eat my teaching in their church as if you will never be the same man of God. It's a law. You will never be the same. I know why many of you are not being changed, although you are in a place of tremendous change. Pride, familiarity. You do not discern. You do not discern. Please listen to me. The Bible says you don't discern the Lord's body. And for that reason, many are weak. Many are sick. Oh, I've had koinonia message activating breakthrough. Destiny, I've had it. I was even there. They used me as an example. And you think that letter is illumination. And somebody somewhere in one, one room made with mud will download it and say, Lord, I have found it. I found the key. So destiny help us. And be praying it and the Holy Ghost will say, this is it. A woman came from Benway State. I think, I, I can't remember, last year or so. This woman came with her husband. They were pastors for many years. They had struggled. It's a terrible thing to be in ministry without any helper. You pay for everything by yourself. <laughs> when, when the woman, listen, when the woman 
I don't know how, I think one, somebody here in, in Koinonia went there and gave her just that message. Activating breakthroughs, the ministry of destiny help us. She received that message, digested the message. She said she listened to that message at least 20 or 25 times. There are messages in my life I've listened to up to 1,000 times. One message. God is my witness. One message. I'm a product of many anointings. What are you a product of? Your world, your rema, your deception. You keep moving around in confusion with no result. Stirring up expectations in people. Oh, I've come for this meeting. You will see what God will do. They say, we are watching. At the end of you, say, it's just that there's no time. Otherwise, you would have seen what God would do. It's a lie. There is time. There is time. Nothing will ever cover for lack of light. Not suit, not good dressing, not English, not even rema. It says, you, if you are not rising, your light has not come. It was designed to come and pick you from where you are. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on us. It's in your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on us. In your name. I listen to at least one koinonia message i know there are uncommon mysteries forget that it came through me i have learned many things from my messages than many messages i listen to it and i'm praying and when is the time when apostle is prophesying i kneel down and i lift my hands as he's speaking see listen you have to learn what i'm telling you because this year make up your mind not to cheat yourself see arrogance with no result is not leading it's it's like a man wearing suit with not even five naira is there he say it's just that i kept the money so no 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 i'm tired of lack of results there is a higher standard god is gauging me with god will not gauge me with the same standard he's gauging many of us because to whom much is given much is expected are we together now Thank God for all of the breakthroughs and the impartations during my retreat for this year. I said, any ministry I honor we, it is like a rattling. We, you know how an earthquake is? Huh? An earthquake or a tsunami. That's what is going to happen in that church. Any ministry, including your church, man of God. My goodness. Yeah. To increase capacity. When you step in, you break chains. You shatter darkness. When you do that, for every ministration you go, there are 10 more waiting for you from it. You see that? Not the one that you just go and say, well, maybe the next one is September and you're just sitting. Of course, you don't use those things just as indices, but there is not enough fire. That's why. Because needs are still there. People suspect you have a track record of not producing results. So nobody's ready to invest in your anointing. Hallelujah. Please hear what I'm saying. What have you learned? What truth do you know that can bail you out? What do you know that can bail you out? If I give you a mic right now, I say, come, teach us one kingdom mystery you have learned. What will it be? What will it be? You see that many of you are just enjoying fellowship, but you are not really holding on to something. Kai, he said, I know whom I have believed. He said, I am persuaded. I've held on to these things. It was the apostle Peter that said, that which we have seen, 
that which we have heard that which our hands have handled you can't tell me i'm not holding this no matter how you deceive me i'm holding it i can feel it i have become one with that experience what do you know about the anointing of the holy spirit we keep talking about the ability of god working in a man you jump at it you fall under that anointing but what do you know about it what do you know about the anointing and getting a job what do you know about the anointing and breakthrough in ministry what have you learned god asked me to pause with the series we'll start because some of us what we need is not just a new message what we need is getting back to say look i need to get this thing now there are certain truths that i know and i will never waste my time in certain levels of ignorance every time i meet a wall before me i know that there is an anointing i must invoke that will call a man a man must appear for that door to open so my prayer is very strategic and intentional i don't pray stupid prayers i pray with intelligence lord where are the helpers i call them because i know if a helper does not appear that door will not open and here comes the helper because i know how to call them they never come on their own they are always called you have been waiting for them you will wait forever there is a mystery that calls helpers are you seeing that round? so our parents are waiting god will send somebody to pay the rent you will wait forever there is a mystery brothers and sisters please hear me am i challenging you tonight i want you to get this thing i love you that's why you see me teach this I want you to hold on to something. Don't hold on to shadows. We are in a hurry to teach. We are in a hurry to do ministry. When we should sit down and learn. I tell you the truth. I wish that I can just have a vacation of four or five months. December's are usually happy periods when we round up program. Because that two or three weeks where I don't have to teach anybody. I now go back to feed my spirit. I preach an average of two or three messages every week aside from school of ministry we are resuming so there are so many things sucking out of me time is so limited for me but many of us have everything all the messages are there with the testimonies do you know you can sit down crying in a room and the light to liberate you is in a message lying down there and the angels are standing close to you and say activators what is all this what do you need to learn again and you call your uncle he says i won't pick and you are there helpless and the angels are saying what is uncle we are here what is uncle have you not read in the bible that strangers shall feed your flock which one is uncle again but in your mind according to what you know if your uncle does not pick your call after two days you are dead who told you Aya. have you not had the ravens brought bread for elijah where did the ravens come from lack of light has limited us please hear what i'm saying god can raise help us for you you have tied god how many pastors sit down and say it's, it's, it's because we are young people is because we have not put balloon around the church that's why people are not coming no and we get angry and fight ourselves and move in ignorance and 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 we have protocol and pa no power no grace no understanding no results the trouble is that they now invite us for programs and you see people writing our ignorance and they go back to go and practice it and come back shocked and confused lean and hungry say i'm tired of guessing say it again i don't know how to beg you and make you believe what i'm saying I honor the Lord for what he's doing in this ministry. The crowds outside, the crowds inside. But brothers and sisters, hear me. And I say this with all humility. Never make a mistake to think it is guess. It can be reproduced anywhere. The same result. It was founded upon mysteries, not luck. Are we together? Yeah. Jesus went to the desert. The same crowds came. He went to the mountain. He went by the... The people, men and women, climbed the mountain, stayed there three days. He had to now say, let's feed them. Is God speaking to us? Who told you God cannot change your story? 
who told you that God cannot lift you up. There is something you don't know. I'm talking especially to the sisters. This our dependency mindset must die this year. This sitting down and hoping. Not valent, when is Valentine? Answer me. I'm not laughing. When is Valentine? Next when 14. Next week Friday. Next week Sunday. It's possible right now that many of us have expectations. And in our prayer, I'm not saying you are carnal, but you are just hoping that somebody will be the one to come and bail you out. Listen, this word will never profit you until the light breaks and the mystery behind it enters you. When you hold on to it, go to bed. You have entered your Sabbath. See, I don't care if at the time you are holding it, Bishop Oyedeko was there probably with one or two clothes, but when he caught that revelation, he said he shouted, I can never be poor. Can you say you can never be poor? Honestly, can you say it? Me, yeah, I can say it. Oh, my goodness. I wave poverty by it, wave me back. Deal done. Because for as long as there is one sick body, hmm, for as long as there is one life that must be changed, you see. There is something you can hold on to, brothers and sisters, that will wipe your tears. Look at Frank Edwards. He carried something he knew and sits upon that keyboard it, and bought cars with it and started an NGO with it and his blessing lies with it. What have you been ignoring that is authorizing Satan in your life? What have you been ignoring that is stopping you from entering school. You are saying jam is hard. Keep quiet and think. What has been stopping you? I'm on my way to paradise. I'm on my way to paradise. Listen, let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. You see, my heart will bleed. If we keep having people, I told you the Lord showed me that this year, Koinonia will be like a place of pilgrimage. I saw several people coming. It will be a painful thing to see pastors, businessmen come and giving testimonies and say, I just had three messages and it changed me. And all you do from now till December is to clap. Wow. Is it true? A miracle happened yesterday in a meeting. A lady who had a hole in her teeth teeth supernaturally appeared before everybody and the people were watching i don't know what some of them thought i was but let me tell you with that kind of result you will not be hungry i promise you are we together oh no 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 hunger you and hunger will part way you are not selling it but somebody will be too grateful and people were crying and just watching and i sat down and i looked i said my goodness when you catch this thing, bah, you have caught it. If it's not there, it's not there. Hallelujah. There's a particular university. They are currently doing an election of the vice chancellor and all of that. I think you guys will bear me witness when we're coming. And several people were calling me. Oh, I'm going to come. Will it work? How? I mean, these are people, distinguished personalities that on a good day, if I knock their office, they should arrest me and go and lock me. But something, there is something they need. And God didn't put it outside me. Every useful thing is inside me. Wisdom, anointing. I love the Lord. You can never take it and leave me. We must go together. If you need it, this body will enter a plane with it. We will all go together. That's why you should never, never, never not be successful in your life. Shout it again. I hate confusion. I hate confusion. See, Satan comes to you and manipulates your life he studies your ignorance and uses it as his tools he studies your ignorance he can create illusions out of your ignorance satan is not a fool he doesn't just run and come into your life he takes a track record he looks at the areas you don't know anything about or where you have not respected the authority of the word of god 
And so he can look at you and say, do you know that until they do arrange for you on internet, the husband is not coming? Because he has studied and he has seen that you have not found out that light that male and female he created them. That the Bible says, seek out of the book and read, none shall want her mate. He searches the bank of the word in you and does not find that mystery present. And he says, use this. And all of a sudden, you are a Christian, you love God, you are praying in tongues. But the next thing, you now start going to join all kinds of useless groups because you are looking for a, a husband. And he takes advantage of you and he will bring a demon to your life and destroy you. You will marry in two months and suffer for the rest of your life because of ignorance. And you find out that in that one mistake, your ministry has been implicated. In that one mistake, your children have been implicated because they are going to grow under the atmosphere of a bad father. God is telling you this way. The authority over your life is saying this way. And people say submit. What have you ignored that is responsible for the strength of darkness in your life? I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do for I need you more and more I'm so aware of my ignorance so I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do Lord I need you I want to challenge you koinonia you have to be determined go back home tonight and write a list of all the major areas of your life where you truly know that you are not getting results humble yourself and pursue light are we together now are we together now forget about valentine or whatever it is of course celebrate it god bless you but i'm telling you this if you want a happy day february 14th every day of your life find out what has god said do i understand what is don't think what you think god said you see that you can assume it's like exams every student sits down they say start and everybody's writing and when you come out the person will say what was your answer it's where you say five I say my own was three and two of them believe they are right it's left for the lecturer by the time you see zero what does that mean it means you were wrong say ah but the man didn't mark my script well you still got zero everybody who scored five got it for you did your calculation and arrived at three meaning you failed you didn't get it well it's up to you to adjust and say no 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 i think i missed something or be arrogant and say it's a bad man waiting for another man many of us never will admit that we are ignorant it doesn't cost me anything you you don't know how i whenever god tells me son i think you need to know more there is a dimension of me you do not know here and you have to correct it i jump at it i almost spend a vigil online searching for everything looking for any koinonia message that relates to that if god says son you like ladies this night be like him where are all those hot messages i preach on character be like him um um the uh, he heaven and hell realities of heaven and hell Part one and two that's what i will listen to till tomorrow till it irons out that dimension in me you don't tremble at his word that's why we don't change when you look at ministries and see the ministries that there is the anointing on their life you see what is happening you just sit down you see you will never preach people into running away from results because you are not getting it. If I am not getting results in my life right now, and Pastor Femi is getting results, and I try to trivialize what he's doing to make you consider him unserious, I'm only joking. Because the truth is, you have problems. And do you know members know where to get answers? Oh, yes. They know where to get answers. I told you, was it last week or week before last, that if I am an unbeliever, when I'm sick, I promise you I'll go to Babalao. I won't do it in the secret. All these go to the secret. I will do it openly. Let camera even follow me. I will go there. And then I'll wait for the one person who will come to challenge me. And I'll bring another person as sick as me. And say, I will kneel down and apologize to you if you heal him. Otherwise, go back home. As simple as that. 
are we together i foresee that a time will come that thing will happen in church members will hold charm and come for service with it the moment they are talking before altar call somebody will stand up and say sir this guy bought for you this is the charm that brought it and i can throw it if you can prove it otherwise that's what happened between moses and pharaoh he had to take the rod and pharaoh said get out of this place you grew up you ate the food that this god ra brought now you are coming to destroy it and moses said i found someone higher nobody great nobody greater no nobody greater than you listen moses said as at that time i thought ra was the highest of the gods and so my allegiance but i found i found somebody in the wilderness and he called himself i am and he said that he's coming to show his sovereignty and when he swallowed up this and after nine ten plagues pharaoh had to give up pastors let's stop deceiving people we know where we are telling the truth and where we are not telling the truth we know where we have results and where we don't have results let's admit it and not explain creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god is waiting for the manifestation there are people who have traveled from far and come for this meeting now some of them have come desperate to receive something imagine if all these people traveled all the way and then they just go back like that If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you will be very frustrated in your Christian journey. Because the end of every assimilation of truth is that it produces a result for you. By the time you get up and go home, now you already know that every time you see your father misbehaving, you now know because you've received superior intelligence that this man is not acting on his own volition. He's been influenced by powers. You see, the devil can no longer use his habit to keep the spirit of anger in you because another light has delivered you. So when you come out from the place of prayer and he starts ranting like a beast, you know you already have superior intelligence and you find out that Satan was using that to keep the spirit of anger so he would destroy you. But now another light has delivered you. And then number two, you now know that he's not fighting with him physically and saying, Daddy, I wound you. The moment he says that, you know where to go and all of a sudden your father will see you and it's as if he's afraid there's something wrong but there are many of us you leave koinonia you come and you are fighting you slap your father you beat why are you acting in ignorance is god speaking to us now have you not noticed how every time you are pressing into God, it looks like there are people all around you who can station themselves to do things that would destroy you. They are trying to fight something. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that light will give you peace, 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 peace. It will swallow away fear from your life and it will give you peace. When you have a revelation, for instance, hear me, that no human being, no man born of a woman can take your life. Not with enchantment. I can only imagine how many places my name has been called in different altars. Maybe when I'm traveling now, they now say die. It's difficult to kill me. I look just physical, but they that are with me, the mysteries that surround me are many many like you see obama you can just see him walking you try to shoot him before you leave the gun you are dead you don't know who was watching you you just know they shot you you didn't see anybody but a bullet entered you because what is more than what you are seeing koinonia hear me i want you to hold your bible please hold your bible inside and outside hold your bible say after me lord jesus this year i pray that the mysteries that would have to be opened for my destiny to change 
hidden in this word may they be open for me the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of influence the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of favor the mysteries of advancement the mysteries of breakthrough the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of grace release it upon me oh god if god answers that prayer you'll be a wonder this year because it will surprise you it's not because there is nobody to give you the job there is something you have not done the earlier you admit it the faster and the better for you oh there's one guy that said i should just hold on when a job when there's job interview he will give me that's too costly you are living your life at the mercy of somebody if it now doesn't work you will hate the person why don't you live forget about all these things and wait upon god are we together now Oh, a lecturer promised me that this time around I will get A in my project. What if that lecturer is sick and is not there during your defense? Then you fail. Woe to him that puts his strength in a man. Oh, God said I'm going to enter the house. How do you think you are going to enter the house? Just because you think you are earning 50,000. Can 50,000 give you a house? You too ask yourself. Look at, see, this is how foolish, I'm sorry to say it, but this is how foolish some of our parents are. They, 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 whenever they are, they are looking at their salary, oh, 50,000, so let's calculate. It will never work that way. The devil will use it to destroy you. One sickness will wipe away the budget and the devil will keep mocking us. You've raised 500,000. One sickness will wipe it away. But you can walk certain principles and a man will lack his sleep in the night. And get up in the morning and say sorry i don't know who this person is but the lord has called me and said pastor alpha god has said i should change your story and you'll be sitting there dumbfounded and god will say you ask for it i said ask and you shall receive but the bible says that we not pray amiss mothers fathers everybody please hear me there is a way out of everything i believe there is a way out of everything sister that marital delay in your family can be broken to pieces if a certain kind of revelation just one more thing i'll add to us and we'll pray one of the mysteries that i have learned in my life that has changed my life forever is the discernment of the body of christ i know there are many mysteries I keep repeating these things because I want your life to change. All men are not equal. Criticize me, but just listen. All men are not equal. If you take that mindset, this is not supposed to be a bad statement. Please don't misunderstand me. I wish it were a lie, but it's the truth. All men are not equal it was the apostle that was teaching the church in Corinth he said because you cannot discern the Lord's body the organogram of and the structure he said for this cause for not discerning I'm not talking of holy communion for not discerning the body and the individuals that have been stationed there who are carriers of your breakthrough he said some are weak how many people have died today because they have not discerned what God has put in the body it's like a table if you come to eat on the table, is it not what you know that you will eat? You see something looking yellow, you are not sure and you will leave it there. And later you find out that that thing is good for your health. That's how we are. Listen. I'm talking about light and illumination. The Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in us in all richness. Colossians 3, 16. But you see, one of the greatest blessings of God to the church outside the Holy Spirit is the positioning of gifts in the body please listen to me i've told you that there are two ministries you must encounter for your destiny to open the moment you meet christ there are two ministries you must encounter the apostolic and the prophetic the bible says the church was built with a very definite system 
it says christ being the chief cornerstone and directly above it are foundations the apostles and the prophets now that's not to say other um members of the body is the same thing you don't give your life to the holy spirit you don't come and say holy spirit you died for me he didn't die for you although they are equal with god but salvation has been put in no other name there is an office that ministers salvation are we together that's how it is you have passed listen there are certain dimensions in life you can never take yourself you hear me say this thing all the time yet no matter how arrogant you are no man can bless himself there are certain dimensions that it will take a representative of these ministries it's an election by grace to open up certain doors for you and you will walk in it as if the devil never existed there are many churches who have done everything but ignore these ministries and many of you have been trained to criticize all kinds I've, I've told you here just keep quiet when it comes to the body of christ serve god with truth and dignity there are many of our parents that are grounded god will invite a man to their churches and they will look at the person and say this young guy or god will invite somebody who will come and maybe the person cannot speak english very well and they now sit down intellectually and the man is teaching he may not be able to talk very well but there is an office he occupies are we together now he may talk and mix it with language and you are there calculating intellectually say i thought I, I need somebody with rema tell me greek and hebrew words whereas the person sent he came out dressed like john like 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 a prophet even jesus could not ignore the ministry of john and excel because when he came he looked for the one who that mantle was upon that foundational mantle john said ah i've seen you say no suffer it to be so I, I will not break protocol. Jesus would have been surprised if he didn't pass through John. When it was time, the Holy Ghost spoke to certain apostolic councils, separate me Paul and Barnabas. He spoke to them. There was something they did upon Paul and Barnabas. Did you know that Agabus had daughters that were prophets, but they never excelled in ministry? Look at that. They died with their prophetic grace. Because although they were prophets, they ignored the structure of the body. Listen, there are many people the Bible talked about for a little time and you never had them again. That's why some of us are where we are. Gods of ourselves, with our own rema, bragging all around. There's a pastor friend, I used to watch him. Um, the guy loves me so much, he admires me, but... I think for a very long time I used to see him. He just comes around, laughs around. When they are prophesying or speaking, he's even embarrassed sometimes to lift his hand. He just, he just lifts his hands as if he's waving. And I knew that this guy would never receive anything. In his mind, he thinks he will receive. Let me tell you something. There are requirements from receiving from these gifts. One of the requirements is honor. 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 You must honor both the person and the office. He says he please this is not human worship i don't want to i have no business i wish i were not the one preaching this i wish we were just hearing a tape so that you will believe it's true i have seen listen i have passed so many people who there is enough grace to wipe their tears and their families and i've been shocked the way the anointing was locked up within me as i watched these families go down in penury because honor is the key that releases the anointing. Jesus entered certain cities and passed like this. A woman was pressing his garment and other people were looking at him. What have you ignored that has refused your door from opening? Please hear what I'm saying, Koinonia. Don't wait until after 10 years of miserable failure and then you now think and say, let me listen to this message hear it now and rise wake up and leave rise above your contemporaries as if the devil does not exist a few who have learned this key have broken every limitation and barrier the bible says for this cause many are weak when it was time when sickness when the serpents were destroying the people nothing happened to moses question what did the snake see that made them not to bite moses it's in your bible 
right that he told him lift up a serpent is it not true look at how people were immune in the bible things were happening to others elijah there was famine he never was even concerned about the famine because he knew that nothing would happen to him there was famine in samaria elisha came he was not saying hey i'm dying give me food he came and saw women eating their children and said what happened there was another mystery that gave him supply brothers and sisters there is a way out of every situation in your life you can come to a man of god to pray for you but you can just come as if you are coming to somebody who manufactures charm do you know even if jesus appears right now there are people who encounter him and still go back unchanged yes absolutely don't you think because he's jesus he will change the law is still the same if you cannot honor his representatives then you do not honor him the result will still be the same who told look at how many parents please you're a pastor how think of how many parents in your church or how many elderly people have come to meet you to say man of god you see let me tell you something many people just believe that ministers and, and, and newspapers have made this happen they believe ministers of the gospel are daft people fraudulent people how to manipulate money from members and enrich themselves that's the mindset newspaper gives and many people carry that faulty mindset and some of us as young as we are that's our thinking look how our families are suffering you pray individually and say god help god said i answered the prayer sins open your eyes and see you have ignored ministries that can wipe your tears you are there a, 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 a program that you will finish five years you are still there seven years on your verge of moving you have never said for once can i not is there no system in the kingdom to bail me out for this cause i'm just sharing with you one mystery i think this is the cheapest of all mysteries because you don't even have to be intelligent to access this i have watched with shock the way i have ministered to people and their lives have changed a, a woman gave a testimony and this is true this is I, do, I, I don't mean it in any idolatry the woman said her daughter had been telling her to listen to one koinonia message and she said she always used to ignore it because you know she had problem with praying in tongues and all of that you, you know what i'm saying and one day things got bad and she said she was listening to one message in her dream that her daughter was listening to and then god was you know using my voice to just challenge and say go and listen to that message and change your story she said she told her daughter to transfer it into her phone listen there was someone that had owed her for a long time as soon as she transferred that text message just the text as in uh, you know how it, you transfer a message it just touched her phone that was how the person called her and said where are you come and meet me at the bank the woman said this is a lie what is going on here it will only work for those who already have honor presiding them otherwise you will pass it like this and move on when the child of the shunammite woman died she was not confused she knew where to run to she said saddle your ass he said don't stop whoever asks you is all well say it is well and he sent gehazi gehazi came and looked at the woman he said it's all well say it's well give me a chance i know the person i'm looking for and she went there and said you represented something in the spirit that brought this child otherwise this child would never have come know what to do with this child she put his office under pressure elisha tried everything spoke the child refused to wake up and he took his mantle he said even if it's for me to be foolish see there is a way you can honor a man of god and put pressure on his office not anointing his office it will force him to release something into your life when i say honor i don't mean money a deep a deep seated there are few men of god i've met in my life and the way i honored them when they were speaking and blessing me i knew it came from their spirit spirit i'll find somewhere to stop because i want us to pray brothers and sisters results are possible in the spirit it's not a matter of luck it's time for you to start knowing what you are not doing 
the mystery of the communion many of us take communion just as something they do in church get me wafers get me zobo okay there's five alive bring it and they are, oh God, thank you and you just throw it you just took breakfast whereas it has delivered a lot of people tight thing you do it but not with understanding so the moment promise comes to stand here or anybody you just you are just waiting those who are tight as you come and stand and although you are supposed you are doing something spiritual it's not working because it's not done the bible says honor the lord he didn't say bribe him you squeeze your envelope you just come and stand and say oh yeah god take no when abraham met melchizedek king of salem that ancient city listen do you know it was after he gave the tithe immediately god spoke to him and said fear not he was teaching him a mystery he said i'm about to bless you it takes courage to be prosperous because you are about to be controversial so fear not there is something i'm about to open in your life that will make people say well, when did it happen he said don't be afraid i know i'm about to bless you but my first instruction is fear not you have done something that is about to bring prosperity people will not understand the mystery so be courageous to take the criticisms because i'm about to change your life he said i am your exceeding great reward abraham is so intelligent the moment god said i am your exceeding great reward he, the, abraham started thinking generational blessings because he knew that blessing was too much he said god so let's talk about my future because i know that a, a man is a failure until he has a successor you are now beginning to speak generational where is the child and god says ah who is this man that ha that has my mind That's how to do business with God. You have so aligned, you understand the language of God. Look at what Solomon did. When it came to Solomon, Solomon said, Lord, give me an understanding heart. I am little. Let me lead your people. He knew where to touch God. Ah, God said, you didn't ask for the life of your enemies. Gave him riches, wealth, and honor. Gave him, you see why Solomon was blessed? He had understanding understanding it was an impartation just one mystery i've shared with you do you know if you hold on to this mystery this law of honor this year alone you will get more results than many people get in their lifetime i promise you just this law just this law just this law something you are ignoring is allowing tragedies to continue in your life something you are refusing to hear is keeping you bound sister it's not like a man cannot come there is something you are ignoring if you will make that adjustment tonight God will surprise you there are brothers here there are things you are ignoring you don't pay attention to instructions there are people inside and outside you don't approach God with a stubborn heart you approach God with a childlike heart please, please koinonia hear me I'm about to pray for you for heaven's sake believe the things you hear me say I love you too much to mislead you Gentiles please give us Isaiah 60 again verse 3 this is the year that Gentiles should come to your light this is the year it should happen that you see somebody get up and come and meet you i mean gentiles coming to your light they come with their blessings when jesus was born the wise men saw his star they started looking for it with gold frankincense when they looked at jesus they looked at a baby but they were wise enough to know this is not a baby they started bowing down they didn't wait until he became an adult they didn't say let's see let's watch if he becomes a serious man they knew that this guy is the one that was prophesied and they started bowing down if wise men could bow to a baby bow to certain principles and change your life forever hallelujah do you believe what i shared with you tonight please the body of christ is not lacking revelation what we are lacking is understanding and the grace to do to 
lead by the truth we know he said now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them i now see why god constrained me i was to start another series i mean an explosive series and god was just constraining me no let the people get this thing otherwise you keep dumping revelation after revelation and you know what i'm doing to you the more i keep giving you revelations without probing your reception a time will come you will be so puffed up of knowledge without any result and it will be dangerous hallelujah saul kai oh my goodness saul's donkey was missing his father kish brothers and sisters hear me there was no hope of finding that donkey i hope you know naturally speaking three days they could not find the donkey and they say you know what let's not waste our time there is a man there is a man this man there is a prophet there is a man of god and they said ah, there's nothing to take to him they were smart enough and the moment they went to the gate at the gates they saw him and he looked at them do you know what he told them he said go and wait for me and i will tell you everything in your heart do you know what is a mountain to you is within the grace of somebody to stamp it for you what looks like a mountain you are there complaining about house rent and god is saying no 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 everybody is growing but there are people who have been graced to trivialize your challenges if you have the eyes to see look at at once they met samuel Samuel said, I will tell you every... He didn't say, I will sit down for counseling. He said, just go up there. Wait for me. I will tell you what is in your heart. And when he went there, their biggest problem became the smallest. He said, I know you came for restoration. Forget about that. That's not the issue. The donkey has been found. Is that a human being? You think that's a human being talking? No, that's a system. It's not a man. It's a system in a human body. The same thing with Melchizedek. You think Melchizedek was just a man? Just a man older than Abraham? How can a man bless a man and, and say possessor of heavens and earth? Can a man bless another man like that? A man that even Christ associated himself with. The Bible says his priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek. Read your Bible and see all these strange men. Elijah, Noah. I've taught you. Do you know what it means for a man to build an ark that is equivalent to three stadiums? Three stadiums. Story building. Three stadiums alone. In hundred years he built it. Is that a normal human being? Made of gopher wood. So you know why he cursed his son. I've told you. He didn't curse his son just because he saw his nakedness. There was something the son saw. It's a mystery. Are we together now? When Jezebel was rising to judge people, Elijah shows up, the Tishbite, the Bible calls him. You think that's a normal human being? He appears again and he appears again in Revelation. What of Enoch, the seventh man from creation? He used to walk among them and one day they didn't find him. Just imagine one day we don't find Aaron, no grave, no nothing. It's after he leaves we may say, ah, so this guy we have been calling Aaron. That's what happened to Jesus when he resurrected. People looked at him and said, my goodness, so it is true. See, when we get to heaven, one of the shock for people is when God shows the, the spiritual content of some of the people that were walking on the earth. Some of us will put our hands on our head and say, I lived with this guy forever. I, he was my roommate, yet I didn't have the eyes to see. I was in his church. I was even an usher. There was capacity like this to help me. Look at Gehazi, foolish man. If you wanted money, if, if you are with a master that blesses somebody and you want money, is it not to kneel down and beg? Rather than going to lie. You see why he's foolish? Very stupid man. That's why he didn't receive any man too. A man who can wipe a rich man's story. Wouldn't you just kneel down and say, my father, change my story. And he said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be king? Poured oil upon him and say, as you go, you will find two men. They will appear from nowhere. The word created them. Look at how these guys manipulated nature at, their, at the frequency of their will. They were like God. They laughed at Elisha and said, you have bald head. He, he created a bear, a sheep bear. It came out, ate the children and disappeared. 
what kind the bible says in hebrews 11 he said the earth is not worthy of this kind of people you see them walk the earth is not worthy oh no something you are ignoring is destroying your life we are going to pray the purpose of this teaching tonight is to let you know that between you and your mountain is a mystery is a mystery away it can keep that mountain there forever or shatter it i have met people who changed my life in less than 24 hours less than 24 hours less than 24 hours what are you ignoring some of you your family members have ignored you that's why things have not changed they have refused to admit that there is an anointing on your life so every time you step in your neighbors are there benefiting from your grace but they have refused to acknowledge it brothers and sisters although they are your mothers and fathers things will never change until they come into that recognition Please rise up on your feet. This prayer session we're entering, I want you to pray with all your heart. Lift up your hands and thank the Lord for this word tonight. Illumination. The grace that comes, hear me, when men have an understanding the grace that comes when people can honor. Thank you, Lord, for this word. I'd like you to lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, I know that the mountain before me can live. I just don't know how to let it go, but I want it to go in this year. Lift your voice and pray. This mountain standing before me, there is a way out. Pray, lift your ministry, lift your academics, lift your job, lift everything before God. Lord, I know I've been trying and trying and trying. I've been trying, I've done all I know to do. But tonight I admit, I admit, I, just show me, oh God, show me what I need to do. Those outside, make sure you are praying. Jesus brought you here to change your life forever. Light, 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 light. Sika barato soto predege de bele de bos. Saka prata seta le prati kete koshoto prada na bala na bala na bala. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to mention every area of your life where you know sincerely that you have not seen results be very sincere with god and say lord there has to be a way out of this lift your voice and pray please take it serious koinonia lord i've not seen the anointing in my life pray lord i'm tired of struggling i lay hands on the sick and nothing happens i've prayed and fasted nothing is happening Lord, my finances. I've read books, but there's something I've not seen. It's just not changing. No matter what I do, I know something is wrong. Lord, favor. I've not caught the mystery of favor. Everybody hates me. Everybody runs away from me. Even those who want to help me change their mind. Something must be wrong somewhere. I admit tonight that I need help. Lord, I pray for my academic. It's been from one tragedy to another. There, there's got to be a way out. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we are still praying. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you. I'm on a strategic project to eradicate ignorance and confusion in my life. In strategic areas, I ask for grace. I ask for grace. Pray. Grace. Lord, I will sit down with this issue of finances and resolve it once and for all. I will sit with this issue of powerlessness, this issue of lack of church growth, this issue of not having a message to preach, this issue of failure all around. Come on, be angry with the challenges in your life and pray. Pray, pray. I was studying. I wanted to find out the secret of church growth. I've heard people say it. I've listened to them. I couldn't quite get the light they got. And one time I was praying. And the Spirit of God took me to Mark 1, 2, 3. And it was like an anointing that came. I knew I had gotten it. I knew I had gotten it. When people talk about prosperity, most of the scriptures, Deuteronomy 8, 18, I've not gotten light from that scripture. God, and God will take you through that word to somewhere else. That becomes your access point out. Are we together? Two more prayer points. You're going to pray and say, Lord, every principle I have ignored that is responsible for where I am now, I receive grace to make amendments. Go ahead and pray. Many of us have ignored the law of honor. You have not discerned the body. Lord, I cry for grace tonight. Every principle that should have opened a door for me, I ignored it out of pride. I ignored it out of ignorance. I, I ignored it out of complacency and laziness. Tonight, oh God, I cry. Tonight, oh God, I cry. Pray, pray. Hallelujah. He said, I commend you. I commend you to the word of his grace. He said, He's able to make you wise. And to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. You have ignored the word. And you've gone around looking for things that only the word can give. Or you have been in close touch with the word. But just growing in knowledge without revelation. Revelation is not knowing what scripture has said. Revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life. That's revelation. God said it's not revelation. It's prophecy. It takes understanding to convert prophecy into manifestation. God said is prophecy, not revelation. Revelation is where you have caught the mystery of translating that prophecy into a, into a, a manifestation in your life. Many of us are carrying God said wonderful, but prophecy has a dynamics to its manifestation. There is, a, there is an alignment there is a path you have to play. Please pray again and say, Lord, what have I ignored that is responsible for where I am? Open my eyes. I will make amends. I will make amends in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray. 
Sheke Barot Stabandia Karabada Baladaba Ebrako Soto Braska Baria da Baladabash Raka Barado Soto Preshe Pereke Telebos Hallelujah Listen I'm about to pray for you Do you know that there is a relationship between soul winning and answered prayer are we together mm. this is just one mystery that can explain the reason why many of us are not getting results in prayer there is a direct relationship between saving souls genuinely and answered prayers a man can save souls and walk his way into unending breakthrough just like that the bible says in daniel chapter 12 right when you read from verse 3 there about it says they that be wise will shine like the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore that's a mystery that any man who is committed to turning men to righteousness must shine as the stars he said he that winneth souls is wise and solomon speaking of wisdom said with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice just for winning souls you are entitled for a baptism of wisdom and many of us want to be wise we want to do all of that and you watch sinners go to hell you are coming for meeting and you watch people around you are not passionate you are embarrassed the bible says he that is ashamed of me before men i will be ashamed of him before my father not on the last day he is before the father making advocacy for you he says i will be ashamed of him before my father are we together now say lord I receive grace to be doggedly involved in anywhere your heart is. Many of us don't know that the key to get God's heart is be involved where his heart is. God is in the business of making sure many come to righteousness. You can't stand in your camp alone and say, God, come and give me tea. Come and give me bread. And God is saying the time is running out. There are people going to hell. This is the direction I'm facing. If you want me to see you, turn around and come here. Don't just stand behind here. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, let, let me run at your heartbeat. Let me run at your heartbeat. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Not just my own agenda. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Souls. Souls transform. Souls genuinely saved. Souls established in righteousness. Hallelujah. Listen. Please be committed to soul winning. Not just preaching to people be committed and bring them to the house of God to be established do this for just one month and you will see breakthroughs that will surprise you believe me when I tell you this believe me look at churches that don't win souls they never grow they never grow there's no reason to grow see if you say you are growing spiritually ask yourself what parameter am i using to measure my growth if you think you are growing spiritually just because of complicated bombardment of rema you are fooling yourself at the end of it you will cry a small child who may not know much but do much with what he or she knows will be standing and excelling just like you see certain people doing tutorials and talking and speaking english and they will write the exam and get 40 and one obedient student he follows the examples as taught everything he may not be so smart but he's just too obedient to be average 
the ways of the kingdom have been simplified follow it with total obedience and conviction and walk your way to a life of wonder do you know especially for pastors many pastors are stubborn i tell you they never listen they never walk this part of this humility the precepts of god they want to define their own laws of success until after 10 or 20 years so they find out they are preaching more they are fasting more there's no result whereas a simple childlike obedience will take them out you see another man of god just come up with a heart panting after god and you you will look around his life and say where is the result they are spiritual laws you don't guess them they are there you follow them or you keep rumbling up and down there are there is a kind of impartation god is already doing eh? listen an impartation is a transfer of possibility listen listen many people don't respect impartations impartation is not about falling down and shouting there is a release your life is only limited by the possibilities you can walk in and there are graces there are graces i'm speaking by the spirit i'm speaking there is a distribution of graces there is a distribution i came with an unction i came with something heavy heavy from my place of prayer something came upon me from the throne room it's an impartation it's a release some of you this is what you need you don't need prayer there are limitations in your life because some graces are not there may my god put it i stretch my hands i stretch my hands i stretch my hands your life is at the mercy of the grace you carry i stretch my hands new wine new wine new oil new wine Kato shaba the voice of the lord upon the waters is mighty new wine i release upon you that grace that unction that grace take it now something is landing on you landing on you that grace that unction new wine fresh grace fresh grace a dimension you have not known a dimension you have not seen fresh grace 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 pay attention to what god is doing tonight fresh grace you are only limited by what you carry as i'm walking towards you i'm walking with angels i'm walking with angels i'm walking with angels i'm walking with angels i'm walking with the angels of the lord fresh grace fresh grace there is a presence fresh grace you must carry it you must carry it i don't have to touch you i tell you there are angelic activities this is what some of you need you will watch doors open it's not just by shouting everything around you is implicated by what is within you let god just do what he's doing tonight you came here because you want results i show you the mystery of results there is something that can come on you and change your life it's not the challenges it's the anointing it's not the challenges it's the anointing limited only by the lack of the anointing an angel is touching her an angel is touching her i'm seeing you entering a door a door in the spirit as 
I hear in my spirit new favor, new favor, new favor. This is not a just new favor. Ah, yeah, someone is entering it right now. Is a realm, is a realm. You can enter it. Take attack. No matter where you are, inside, outside, all those who this word is upon, I put the word upon your spirit. What you are receiving tonight cannot be bought with money. It's more than a miracle. You are receiving a new season. Hallelujah. Listen. You've heard me say it again and again. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is. Is the difference. Your life is only limited by the grace. You don't have to change anything around you. Something just needs to come on you. That lady on blue, the Lord is saying breakthrough. That's what you came for. That lady on blue you are holding, breakthrough is over. It's over. The yoke is broken. It's over. Over. One more prophetic word for a family here. I'm hearing in my spirit and the Lord will locate them sounds of joy sounds of joy the anointing will look for you the anointing is like an address sounds of joy where are they oh god sounds of joy you must hear that sound sounds of joy for joy is a force in the spirit sounds of joy sounds of joy sounds of joy sounds of joy Hallelujah. Let's sit down if you can for a few minutes. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Please pay attention. I told you there will be impartations all through. All through. All through. Even while the word of God is coming. When I saw the visitation God gave me in the secret place, I knew he was up to something today. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, listen, and with power. And then the Bible says, with that Holy Ghost and power, he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed. He didn't just heal them with compassion. Listen, listen, listen. He didn't just heal them with desire. He didn't just heal them with talk. He healed them and did good because he was anointed. You must be anointed for everything. Zeal is not enough. Results are at the mercy of the graces and the anointings that are at work in you our lives are defined listen to me brothers and sisters our possibilities in life are not defined by our backgrounds they are defined by the kinds and the dimensions of graces that are at work in us it is on the strength of this that men are different they are not different in their biological makeup they are different on the strength of what they are hosting within them this is what creates a response your environment does not respond to you physically your environment has never been disobedient what is on you controls the extent of the response of the things around you how god look at the extent to which jesus was anointed and the bible says he went doing good the measure of good he did was proportionate to the grace that was at work in him you don't do good just by desire please listen while i was leaving home to come here my heart was so heavy because there are thousands of people gathered 
and thousands others from different parts of the world following and now I'm wondering these people have challenges listen these people have mountains I got a text I think there's someone here is it a five-year-old child or something with cancer right here in this place tonight five years that's the woman right you are the woman no no it's not a word of knowledge just sit down they sent me a text look at that woman no matter what you sing and preach that woman has brought a child five year old with cancer what did the child do the child does not even have an opportunity to say anything the bible says that good that this woman wants cannot be done just with zeal and desire listen to me that good because there is a spirit sitting on that family and that baby it takes more than nice talk to set them free i will never be a man of god who will be a noise maker the problems of people are more than noise people need results in their lives look at that woman left adamawa because she came for an encounter right here and her father who had an accident was walking brothers and sisters hear me i repeat your possibilities are limited only only the little work with god and my work in the spirit i have come to the conclusion that your limitations are never a limitation caused by mountains they are limitations based on the extent of grace the kind and the dimension of grace at work in your life is what defines everything literally everything from favor to breakthrough to healing to speed regardless of what the problem is believe me when i tell you there is a dimension of grace that can solve it so our challenge is not to discuss obstacles our challenge is to contend to dimensions where every obstacle that is prevalent to man is under the jurisdiction of the grace we carry at that point you become a blessing when you love god and you love people you will stay in the secret place till you become anointed because that's the only thing you have to give people you can give people stories after this meeting now you will forget everything i've said just like you forgot what i told you during the miracle service the only thing you remembered were the prophecies i told you and the miracles you had as powerful as the teaching was last miracle service you frankly cannot remember it entered your spirit but it's hardly in your mind but you remember the pain you came with you remember the hunger you came with now we don't live and serve God just for miracles but brothers and sisters my simple teaching tonight and this is what the Lord put in my spirit to share with us that miracles you receive listen listen this is you have to get this tonight the way you maximize miracles is not by experiencing them alone you must discern what those miracles mean because miracles are a code they are a language the voice of God is upon every miracle that he performs he is speaking something and it's important you understand what God is saying are we together now the miraculous every manifestation of the Spirit of God signs wonders healings breakthrough prosperity favor open doors whatever they are you have not maximized a miracle if all you live is with the experience of it you must discern the voice of god upon that miracle and the language that he through that miracle is speaking to you that's how we are blessed by miracles every miracle is a language just like laughter just like tears these are different languages in the realm of the spirit and tonight god is using the miraculous to say three things to us number one I will say it exactly as the Lord asked me to say it. Hmm. Number one, the first language that miracles, signs and wonders, healings speak is the language of God. But the first thing God is saying through miracles is, I am not the author of sin, sickness and pain that's the first language 
of God that miracles reveal. The moment you experience a miracle in your life, it's a language. God is saying through it that I am not the author of sin. I am not the author of sickness. And I am not the author of pain. John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh not. In other words, you never find him around except to do this. To steal, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus made clear his manifesto. He said, but I am come that ye may have life and that you have it more abundantly. So when you experience a miracle, in that miracle, God is speaking. And what he's saying, number one, is that by this miracle, let it be confirmed to you that I'm not the author of sin. I'm not the author of sickness. Please listen. You will never open up your heart for healing if you believe God is the cause of sicknesses. You will never open up your heart for healing if you believe God is the source of pain. God through a miracle is speaking a language. My son, my daughter, you came with a door that is closed. Now I have opened that door. It's a message to you that I am not the author of sin, of sickness, and of pain. Two scriptures quickly. Mark chapter 1. Please give us 38 to 45. Very interesting reading. Mark chapter 1. I just want to put this foundation and speak the things that the Lord has asked me to speak to us through his word. And then we'll pray. There are already miracles happening. Already miracles are happening. Mark chapter 1. 38. We are reading down to 45. Listen. It says, and he said unto them, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also, for there came I forth. 39. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. Did you see that? Next verse, please. And there came a leper beseeching him and kneeling down to him, just like many of you have come, to find out, Lord, is this how my life will end? Or do you have another plan? Here's his reply to you. He's saying... He kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou will, thou can make me clean. In other words, I know you have the ability. I just need to verify your willingness. And this is what Jesus says. 41. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him, and said unto him, read on, I will be thou clean. I will be thou clean when you read from verse 45 down to 45 you will see that the man was healed so miracles are languages this is what jesus is saying through the miracle i will i will you know that i am but it's important for you to know that i will do it you know i can make you blessed but it's another thing for you to believe i will do it the Bible says, what things soever thou, des thou desire. He said, when thou prayest, believest that thou receivest it and thou shalt have it. Miracles are a language. James 1.17 James 1.17 Shalabakotaya I tell you, the presence of God is so strong. I'm just seeing a fog outside. I'm not even seeing people. That's all I'm seeing, like a fog, thick fog. All the overflows. That's what I'm seeing outside. And I believe that that glory is doing something in people. Hmm. No matter where you are, whether you are sitting in the gutter, on the fence, on a tree, wherever, it truly does not matter. Now, I know that it's difficult to believe that because you're outside. You think you are not seeing me directly. It's not necessary. James 1 17 everyone please read one to read every good gift uh-huh and every perfect gift is from above can mean anywhere so God clarifies coming down from who because there are spiritual wickedness in heavenly places so God says no so so you are not confused that I just said above it comes down from the father of light 
in whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning he won't say this today and do this tomorrow so every miracle you will receive some of you have already received is a language you must not only experience it but you must discern the language God is saying look my son my daughter this dear family no matter how much you have cried and all of that he's telling you number one that know this because there are many of us here who are angry at God right now God you are the cause of my problems God you are the one who has not done this and that God is saying to tell you through the miracle that you will receive that he's not the author of pain he's not the author of the closed door say amen the second language that miracles speak the language of God spoken through miracles number two that I am a loving compassionate and merciful God the second language of God as revealed through miracles is that I am a loving comma compassionate and merciful God Matthew 35 verse 36 the love of God is a revelation that we must have listen 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 the little time I have walked with God I have been amazed I know that preachers have preached about the love of God I have also read about it but I am amazed at the love of God for me my revelation of the love of God only climaxes at the substitutionary work of Christ but there are things God has done here and now in my life that makes me know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God loves me and I, I'm not just speaking about general things oh you are breathing you are standing you are not in the mortuary all those things are general things that don't give personal revelations I have seen God arise to do things in my life that I, I, I sit back sometimes and I fight tears the love of God is a revelation that sponsors the release of power the love of God his compassion compassion is an adjective that qualifies love it, it attempts to add emotions to love when you add emotions to love it becomes compassion the expression of it revealed many times in scripture you see the Lord moved with compassion Matthew 30, 35 verse 36 okay we can't have it projected Matthew 35 36 Sorry, let me just open it here so that we'll hurry up. Oh, I think that's a mistake. I said 35 forgive me let's go to first John first John 4 19 I think I skipped scripture I made a mistake there pardon me it was a revelation of the compassion of Jesus first John 4 are we there 19 please let's read let's hurry up because of time one to read everybody we love him because he did what who first love us the Bible says God had commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners right in due season Christ died for us we love him because so what we are giving to him as love is only a reflection of his benevolence how that he gave it to us Psalms 145 I found a very interesting scripture you'd want to listen to Psalm 145, 8 and 9. Psalms 145, 8 and 9. Are we there?
Psalms. It says, The Lord is gracious and full of what? Say it after me, full of compassion. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He says, slow to anger. The word there is patience. The New Testament calls it long suffering. Slow to anger and of great mercy. In fact, NIV says rich in love. Rich in love. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger and of great mercy. Verse 9. The Lord is good to how many? The Lord is good to he says and his tender mercies are over all his works so the condition to qualify for god's mercy is that you are created by him the moment you are god's creation you qualify powerful revelation mm. so regardless of what the cause of the sickness regardless of what the cause of the challenge is are we together now whether it was your fault whether it was carelessness it was a mistake regardless of what it is the bible says in god's economy there is a system where his mercy can work you are good and your mercy is forever Hallelujah. you are good and your mercy is forever Hallelujah. do you know why we need mercy because there are people here the challenges that you are facing right now in your life there are some of us the challenges are self-inflicted it, it, it was it was certain carelessness that gave room to demons they advise you not to sell the house you were looking for money immediately you sold the house and now you are houseless are we together that's carelessness but the mercy of god are we together you know sometimes we feel so bad and we feel can god show me mercy and rewind the hands of time and bring me out again the mercy of god was expressed in the parable of the prodigal son the bible says the boy looked he was eating with pigs and says come the bible says he came to himself and said how many hired servants have enough to eat in my father's house and i am here you know paraphrasing eating with pigs he said i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven and i am not even worthy to be called your son but take me as one of your servants the bible says while he was afar off the moment the father saw him he ran to him put the signet ring he didn't even say stupid boy you are finally back never discussed as as far as is recorded in scripture never discussed the only thing the father said is my son was once was lost but now he's found i prophesy to someone here those who are concluding against you because the challenges in your life were caused by you you know it was your fault there is still a bailout system in God's economy. It's called the mercy of God. Tonight may that mercy reach you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Miracles are a revelation by God that he can give men a second chance again. God does not just have a second chance. As many chances as your sincerity can receive. The Bible says he's slow to anger. Slow to anger. The distance between where he is and his judgment, he slowed it down to give you room to tap into his mercy. There is no mercy in the realm of the spirit. Mercy is only in this realm. That's why you cannot pray for Satan to repent. Mercy is only a function of time and only those who walk with time can experience his mercy. So he tied mercy to the morning. He says your mercies are new every morning. Every 24 hours is renewed again. Ah, so that he showed you yesterday does not mean he cannot show you tomorrow. God is a merciful God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are families that are probably damaged here. 
because of carelessness there are many families that are in financial bankruptcy they didn't listen when they would have listened there are many things we are humans is saying is, is a popular saying it says to air is human is that true all kinds of self-inflicted things but tonight there is a system in God I know you have even concluded yourself but there is a system after Samson's hair was taken away and they were using him to mock God in the temple they thought they plucked his eyes and the hair would never grow back again and Samson lifted up his voice to the God who was full of compassion and all of a sudden his strength returned and the Bible says he killed more people in his death I'm speaking to someone here they have not seen speed yet till you experience the mercy of God I know that for weeks now you've not been yourself but God is about to show you mercy and when he shows you mercy listen with mercy comes restoration naturally it's a sequence that follows don't sit down meditating on what you did wrong what you did right there is a provision for the mercy of God that's the language of a miracle so if when you were living in the world you got yourself involved with all kinds of things and then you had HIV now you are born again and you love God does God have to leave you like that to die no sir no sir no sir every time sin was cured sickness followed if God has forgiven you your sin that is spiritual he should be able to heal HIV do you know there are too many people who believe things are not working in their life because of certain things that have happened it's a different thing if you're a rebel and your heart is not broken and contrite because the mercy of God only follows and, and is applicable to those who have a broken and a contrite heart rebels never experience the mercy of God so when your heart is broken and contrite you're about to receive something that will change you hallelujah I was supposed to go for the job interview but I stayed overnight playing games and I slept I woke up by 10 the interview was over I've missed the job now the mercy of God can still speak for you I told you mercy comes with restoration if you were supposed to be employed three years ago even if they employ you now it's not restoration it's just advancement God must find a way of bringing the balance of three years so that when they check the graph of your life they don't see where the lag was that's restoration restoration is not progress restoration is an is an acceleration to catch up with where you would have been had the obstacle not come let's hurry up number three the third language that miracles speak signs and wonders now this is very important the third thing God is speaking tonight and always through miracles is I desire that you trust me enough to follow me wholly when God brings miracles he reveals his sovereignty not just his love so he tells you that I am a God of love and compassion but I am also mighty I calm the sea I calm your life I am worthy of your trust I am worthy of your handing over your entire life to me listen I am convinced that any man who is afraid of handing over the management of his life now listen it's a very different ball game to be born again and it's another ball game entirely to hand over the management of your life to God there are many people who are born again you are praying in tongues but you have not handed over the management of your life to God come and learn of me he says take upon me he says my yoke is easy and my burden is light when it is killing you it's not of God hallelujah is God dependable enough for you to suck to hand over your whole marriage to him is God dependable enough for you to hand over your finances to him and his ways is God dependable enough for you to hand over your life with him do you know when you see people carry talisman 
carry charm, carry arrow, and all these things they move around with to aid protection. Do you know what they are saying? Even that act of stupidity is also a language. God, I don't trust you enough to depend on you. Mm. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. So when you see the sovereignty of God, quarter to shame, he steps in for you. It's a language. He's saying, I am that mighty. And as a result, hand over everything. You know, my concept of born again is not that you recited um, the Lord's prayer, salvation prayer. Reciting salvation prayer for me is not born again enough. You are born again when I look at your life experientially and I see the influence of the government of the kingdom in every aspect of your life. You give God academics and leave finances, you are not born again. You are a rebel in that area. Do you know Satan only attacks the area that is not covered by the kingdom of God? He cannot attack an area that is covered by the kingdom of God because you are numb to it. Your job is to apply the principles of the kingdom and leave God with the responsibility of manifesting his word. Our fears, our insecurities make us to come out of alignment. So when Jesus came, his message was repent, go back. You've trusted God concerning every other thing. When you thought the carryover will come, you saw it change. Now for job, you are trying to maneuver your ways. There is somebody somewhere and you keep disturbing him. Hundred missed calls, his foolishness is a sign that you do not depend on God. Tonight I'm encouraging you by the miracles that God will do. In this place he's speaking to you and saying can you not see that my life your life is safer with me than it is with you are we together protection people are afraid of dying listen the world is so vulnerable you don't have to be outside to die people have sat down inside about to take the first spoon of food and they collapsed and died mysteriously there are arrows that fly by day. You can only rebuke the ones you know. What of the ones you don't know? The safest place to be is under. The Bible says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. It says, Shall abide under the shadow of His wings. Like a hen covers the children. A hen, may, you can slaughter chicken. But not when children are under it. You can catch it when it's roaming around. But when a real responsible hen has the children under it, you come near there, you lose your eyes for it. Have you seen a chicken that violent? Yeah. So God is a merciful God to you. But wait and see what he is to those who want to trouble you. That's why the psalmist said, How he said, Many are they that trouble me. Many are they that says, Where is your help? He said, But thou, O Lord, you are a what? Shield. First. God will shield you so that you calm down and then now turn and deal with anybody who is cursing him in your life. That's what will happen to somebody. I'm not motivating you. Believe me. If you believe in God and you believe in miracles, most people who believe in miracles have not settled down to discern what they mean. So all of a sudden, if in a few minutes now, the pain suddenly disappears. You don't just go back saying, wow, this, this koinonia is powerful. No, you have experienced the miracle, but you are not blessed by it because you have not discerned the language that comes from it. If God suddenly, by tomorrow, someone calls you and gives you a land, opens up a door for you, untold wealth within one week, if you just get excited and say, finally, I am rich, you have experienced the miracle, but you have not discerned it. You must know that God is speaking there and saying, it is my might. That one is not love you are seeing. That one is my might. I can compress time and bring your desire of one year to one week. Can you depend on me? That's why you see, most people, Pastor Jake, don't discern miracles. That's why they keep receiving miracles and their spiritual life keeps going down because they are receiving miracles and not discerning from it. I have learned from every dealing in, of God in my life a dimension of him. Like Mike said it so powerfully. There are names God wants you to know. Not the ones you've read in the Bible. 
he uses miracles to write his names upon your life so that by the time you are 30 years you are 40 years you have known certain names of god enough for you to build a foundation so that no nonsense will just come around and shake you if you have been born again for a while and you shake and fidget over everything there are some names of god you don't know are we together listen if by the grace of god let me just give you an analogy for many years we have been transporting people the bus services so you know by experience and by revelation that we are kind-hearted and we love you is that true now if on your way coming for koinonia sir somebody quickly rumors to you and says after service this night the way i've been feeling or apostle told me or i had a vision or i had a dream that we are not going to use bus this night the experience you have had with me will make you to trivialize that nonsense so when satan speaks and you pay attention it's because there is something about god you don't know so he will look at you and say hey, you better just be laying hands on your stomach because barrenness for sure is your own you are seeing it with everybody and at first you say no it's not my portion and then every day your whole prayer time you are laying hands on your and say oh god no i can't be barren i can't be barren it's no longer prayer you are only spiritualizing unbelief that one is not prayer again do you know there are many things we call prayer that is not prayer that you are using prayer language does not mean it's prayer it's simply a spiritual way of communicating unbelief that's why it doesn't get answered to you you are consoling yourself but when it rises up is you are not asking god for anything you think you are asking oh god are you not the one who said this in the realm of the spirit what you are saying is god mercy i'm afraid so the only thing you get back is is mercy not answer because you thought you were requesting but god is listening to the voice of your spirit you are you are ramp you are wrapping scriptures just to vent fear and god is saying if you trusted me you would have been quiet by now imagine that you are still praying for this chair to hold you by now pastor alpha and mike you are just moving and then later i tap us out and say are you stop praying let's pray lord in the name of jesus gravity is still working i i know this is that is that are you are you a, an intelligent physics student no that there is a level to which we understand but there is a level to which it's unbelief and somebody will now ask you and say what you need is not prayer what you need is revelation and an encounter an experience that makes this real so someone will say jump up and match it when you match it and it does not fall do you know sometimes god does not call, cause trouble but he gives you strength by exposing you to your fears and then you find out that they didn't do you anything you thought you will die but you are still standing and so you laugh at what made you cry yesterday that's how we grow in the spirit doctor's report said two weeks you are still five years and you've not taken panadol they said this hepatitis is is just at best oh if you reach 21 glory to god you are now 45. you were not thinking about it you have you reached 45 because you forgot about it now that you have started remembering you are wondering whether you reach 48 you will reach even 100. no see i have constructed my belief system such that believe me when i tell you there are some things that cannot enter my mind again if i pray with you you'll be very frustrated because while you are rapping and ranting requests and say oh god baba this and that and that there are certain things you know about god that gives you rest that's why i say come on to me you have been moving you are going on to anybody you are moving he said come on to me all ye that are weary what wearied you running around like a roaring lion that's the spirit of satan that makes people God, he, listen, listen. It's Satan that moves around like a roaring lion. God only moves his eyes, not his body. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord run it to and fro. Satan has to physically run up and down. And you are down joining him. So he said, come on to me. This running around has wearied you. I will give you rest. Have you seen somebody rest? When you say rest in peace. Is the person moving around have you seen somebody dancing and you're about to bury him you are wicked you bury people who are quiet be still stillness stability in the spirit is a great sign of faith turn and prophesy to someone and say be still
Say your running around will not bring you the, the problem, the answer. Say it, say be still. Your phone calls, go, say it, your phone calls, text messages, and running around will not bring you the answer. Be still. Your lack of sleep, continue, will not bring you the answer. Discussing your problems with everybody will not bring you the answer. Beating your wife, whether you are married or not, say it. Say beating your husband too will not solve the problem. Harassing your children will not solve the problem. Committing suicide will take you to hell. Look, do you know people who claim they don't have energy, I'm surprised that they are wasting the remaining one doing useless things instead of them to go to the presence of God and die there and say, Lord, this thing, whether or not it is answered, I'm already in trouble. There's no other trouble to enter. So let me stay in your presence and die there. There is a way you put pressure on the integrity of God. When he knows he's the last card truly in your life, you'll be surprised to see what he will do. Many of us have options. You must follow him. He said, if you will not believe me, believe me for the work's sake. Believe that I am in my father and we are one. There is a oneness in us. I handed responsibility to my father and I submitted to his authority. It gave me rest. Brothers and sisters, any miracle that does not draw you closer to Jesus. Listen, even if that miracle was produced by the power of God, if it does not draw you closer to Jesus, you have not really received the real miracle. You have received the experience, but you have not discerned it to make you grow. I am surprised that the more people receive miracles, they now run away from God. When Zacchaeus had a miracle, he dropped down from the tree, gave up his, his um, tax collecting work and immediately walked with Jesus. When Peter saw the miracle of the fish, he said, go away from me, I'm a sinner. And Jesus said, no, come, come. Come and sit down, let's eat together. Miracles draw people. You are a drunkard, you don't spend one hour without taking a bottle of, of Gulda. You have been sitting here for hours now. The urge is not there, that's a miracle. The miracle is not so that immediately after koinonia, you quickly go back and take one more before you sleep. You have frustrated the grace of God. You know, let me tell you something. By God's grace, I believe in miracles. But I also believe the message that miracles give. We don't discern the languages. We only gyrate in the experiences. That's why Satan corrupts. When a native doctor gives you a miracle, he, he attaches a message to it. He says, by this miracle, know that this small thing this horn you are seeing is powerful and when you receive that miracle you will go back to the man again there is nobody who runs away from result when you receive results in an area you stay there if the result is consistent you camp there so that you visit god's presence receive a miracle and run away and only go back now that you have acknowledged that he's the only one who can produce the miracle stay there tell your neighbor stay with God please prophesy say stay with God there are people here as they are saying stay with God the Holy Ghost is speaking to you because I don't care whether you are born again or not the kingdom is not a priority to you you probably just came here because the sickness or the challenge or the bills or whatever is eating you up yes God will touch you but if all you get tonight is prophecy so that you can build a house you have not discerned it miracles genuine miracles produced by the spirit should draw men to God so when you see the favor it brings tears in your eyes and you say Lord I will walk with you forever I've tried every other thing but I've settled with you say amen the last message that miracles produce there are many more but let me just stop here oh scripture for the third point John 10 30 to 38 just write it and you go and read it later our time is gone 
John 10 30 to 38 the next point what God is saying tonight and what he will say always with genuine miracles listen this is what he's saying my servant is my representative he represents my voice to you hear him the last message that miracles produce is that God is speaking to you that if I can come to you and prophesy to you if you can get healed if you can get blessed God is saying something he's saying the man you are seeing the ministry you are part of are a representation of my program on earth here and now so have the confidence to not just listen to me listen to them miracles are a language that demonstrate that the man speaking to you the one with whom God will use to produce the miracles I know people say in meetings we have not come to see any man we came to see Jesus that's true but listen to what father Abraham told Lazarus he said they have he said let somebody come you know return from the grave and he said no they have the law and the prophets they should listen to them in other words there are people that represent what the out-of-body experience would have given them listen to them a man who can tap from an unseen realm and bring an anointing to touch your life it will be stupid for you to believe that he's not at, in touch with God so if he tells you Jesus Christ wants a relationship with you and you don't listen to that one you have not discerned the miracle are we together now if I come and stand on stage here and I'm just standing and you are falling and shouting and receiving an impartation that is a message it's not just it's not about really about a man but it's the fact that God is speaking and he has found a vessel he's speaking with so you listen to the man speak as though you are listening to God forget about the imperfections that will come you are not alone the Holy Ghost is there to see through it what if I listen to everything and I fail no how did they write the Bible How did they write the Bible? All kinds of people wrote the Bible. Temperous people. Bad people. But in the midst of it, the purposes of God were still preserved. Holy men wrote. Regardless of their imperfections. Let me tell you. There is a degree to which no matter how much flesh you have, God will veto it to make sure certain things will pass to his people with the level of purity that they need. Whether it is intellectual limitation, hear me. Whether it is spiritual limitation that is why a donkey can talk do you know what it takes for a donkey to learn english when men of god pray for utterance utterance is not oratory utterance is the ability of the holy spirit to superimpose your flesh and grant that your communication be full of light that it be accurate and with minimal if any corruption as it gets into the heart of the receptors that's utterance utterance is not the ability to speak english that's oratory utterance is a spiritual thing the capacity to communicate realities such that regardless the spiritual level of the listeners they will receive that one you have to pray for it you go to school to get oratory but you stay with the spirit to get utterance hallelujah Hebrews chapter 2 when you read from verse 4 the Bible talks about the man Jesus he said he was approved Hebrews 2 verse 4 can you give it to us quickly God also bearing witness he talked about the man Jesus and how that he appeared unto certain people and those people now haven't commissioned them to go and represent him the Bible says God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will so God confirmed their word you may doubt their English but you may not doubt the result the same way some of you will not doubt what you are about to experience you know I watch people receive miracles and sometimes I know even them they don't agree have you seen somebody falling under the anointing and he's shocked as he's going down what's happening to me but he's still going down anyway that's the same way your life will change you will sit down and not know what is happening to you 
you will just walk out of this place and my god like the chains of peter fell you will see chains just fall and leave you it says god bearing them witness so what are miracles instruments of witness god validates the fact that this person is my servant listen to him he has been approved like you have navdak registration number on water now there are those who produce water at the back of their house and don't have navdak registration number when they catch them you find them whether they are sincere or not they were not approved we're about to pray isaiah 44 verse 25 and 26 two scriptures and then we'll begin to pray that staring is happening again isaiah 44 25 to 26 listen talking about god now the god that frustrated the tokens of the liars and make it divine as mad the bible says he turned wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolish listen to what he does 26 that's what he does to them but this is what he does to his servant that confirmed the word of his servant and performed the counsel of his messengers what is the confirmation of the word you are blessed if it happens it's a confirmation what is performing the counsel be healed and immediately you are healed that's a performance that's creation like a woman is in her, her father is in adamawa and she's here in zaria and a word comes and all of a sudden she goes back and the man who had an accident now is walking he performed the counsel so if there is no proof in your life among the many variables you have to check is whether you are approved they no 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 you can be a servant of god but not yet be approved being called does not ever mean being approved approved means you have been released to begin to dispense the realities of the kingdom many people think the opposite of being approved is being fake no the opposite of being approved is being real but unapproved there are many unapproved genuine servants of god unapproved genuine servants of god in ministry for many years as isaiah he was prophesying but he was not approved six verse one in the year that king uzziah died isaiah saw the lord a call was taken and given to him is that true he said here am i send me god didn't say i'm already sending you that was when his ministry started you can be doing a lot of things the opposite of being approved get this the opposite of being approved is not being fake fake is in another category you can be real yet not accredited like you are a student but you don't have a certificate yet you are in school you are intelligent you may even be on it you may even be doing projects but it doesn't make you a graduate there is a certificate do you have it many people just stand and say the bible says this sign shall follow i am a believer be healed we keep mocking ourselves with nonsense because when you read the bible intellectually you will get not head sophia human wisdom you must read it of the spirit tarry in jerusalem he had told them many times do you know before he said tarry ye he had sent them one time he said go two by two what happened to the power that is now saying tarry until ye be endued what happened to the power that they came back blind i saw he gave them his name they were not yet approved they only went in his name that's why i said don't rejoice that miracles you didn't do anything there if i tell you the dynamics of the result you didn't participate the most important thing is that you must be a part of this family your name's being written in heaven approved when you are approved it's like a register in the realm of the spirit so when god is paying approved servants you receive your share you are not receiving salary find out whether you are employed that's why the bible says those he called he glory he, um, those he predestined he called but he has not glorified them yet those he called after a season of building he now glorified them if a man will punch himself that man will be a vessel unto honor he can stop there as a vessel unto honor comma 
meat for the master's use. Believe me, many approved singers, not mistrels in the spirit, they sing and twist their tongue and they think the secret is in minor songs. Help and you sing all kinds of minor songs. You think the secret is in clashing cymbal because Joshua Selman is doing it. You harass every drummer to clash every cymbal. No, show me the certificate. Let no one trouble me, Paul says, for I bear. There is a badge. Demon said, Jesus, I know. We see his certificate. A man approved of God. Approved of God. Approved of God. Paul the apostle was approved of God. Let me tell you, every true servant of God who has walked with God and has a dealing with God is approved. And when he's approved, immediately, whether you are called into the ministry of helps, there must be a sign from heaven. When Jesus was born, he was approved of God. There was a sign. A star arose. On the day of Pentecost, that experience was approved of God. There was a sign. Every time there is approval, there is, there is a sign. Where is your own? It could mean you are not even in the school completely. Or you can be in the kingdom and not be in the school of the spirit. There are two different things. Like there are people in ABU. Some are selling rice. Some, are, uh, some have, some, some are selling um, things. You are inside ABU. But you are not in any faculty. So you can be in the kingdom. But not in the school of the spirit. Only those in the school of the spirit access power and command the grace that will keep nations still. I'd like you to pray one minute and say, Lord, I'm in your school, Lord. Nothing is taking me out of there. I'm not only in the kingdom, I'm in the school of the spirit. The place where men are made with power. The place where men access the presence of God. Superior dimensions of spiritual reality. Pray in one minute. Thank you, Father, for being in the kingdom. I gave my heart to you and I'm there. But Lord, I walk with you consciously in obedience. He that endures to the end, he shall be given a crown and a white stone. There are rewards. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. Brothers and sisters, there are rewards. That's why there are diversities of results. If there are no rewards, everything will be possible for everybody at the same time. Because the Lord is rich unto all. Why are there disparities in results? It's disparities of trainings. Just like you have a professor, you have a master's holder, you have an undergraduate, you have a secondary school certificate holder. Different seasons that provide different accesses to graces. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians will rise up to begin to pray now. God will do a quick walk. Second Corinthians 12, verse 12. By this little teaching, I, I like you to desire more in God. More in God. Greater grace. A time will come your talk will weary people they will be tired of you when you speak and there are results your words become heavy they look like the word of god second corinthians 12 12. paul was speaking about his credentials you used to know me as a scribe but i had an encounter i was in the wilderness of arabia for over 19 years he was in the kingdom but he was in the wilderness of Arabia after 19 solid years of stringent building with the Lord a testament came truly the signs of an apostle there are signs called the signs of an apostle the sign is not the name I am Apostle Jeffrey I am Apostle Joshua Selman no I am Pastor this I am Reverend this the word apostle there does not does mean apostle like an office. The sign of an approved and a sent one. When Navdak approves something, no matter what the drink is, there is something they stamp there. 
no matter what it is check somewhere even if there's no space they create space and stamp it it is based on this brothers and sisters that we can gather people like this by grace and say come this is not the issue of my personal faith this is the issue of a NAFTAC number koinonia is registered this is like you have jam center there is jam center that is for crooks when people go there they don't even write exams is that true you pay money but there's what they call uh, what they call it approved centers when you go there you sit down there are tables they have gone through a, tra a training by the grace of god by the election of grace and by our determination to take advantage of it truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you all in what was the first thing the first sign is not miracles the patience to endure till you access it the first sign of an apostle a saint one is not signs and wonders many foolish people deceive themselves the first sign is patience for many years you will walk with god and not see one result the first sign is patience you will prophesy nothing will happen you will pray for the sick nothing will happen but you are still in the school so patience then in signs notice the progression signs trickles then it now moves to the next realm wonders then the apex of your apostolic ministry is called mighty works that one is not personal miracle that is territories elijah stands and said there shall be no rain look at the progressions these four levels if you don't enter this level in ministry you will never be fulfilled there are people this where they are patience 10 years they will not move others signs here and there somebody is testifying you you are let me tell you how you know it's a sign you are not even sure whether it came from you they just say pastor prayed for me and sincerely you cannot tell when there is no predictability a sign shows direction that's not it if you see a sign to abu that sign is not abu it's pointing you there wonders a realm of predictable results you begin to see certain things and then before you reach the apex he called it mighty works the only other person that title was used for was jesus he said what wisdom is this that such mighty works were wrought this is where we are going where you shift systems so don't just say i'm born again i will enter here you are joking it's the same way saying i have admission i'm a first class student they gave you admission you walk your way to first class the options are there he gave unto one five two one according to their several ability not his desire for them several things will be happening tonight brothers and sisters i want you to trust three things tonight as we pray one listen 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 number one believe in your faith in god and god's faith in you two listen believe in the covenant that we have with god i told you that our work with god is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant there are covenants that men have with god let me tell you listen i can take one bottle of beer here and come up and minister i will minister by the covenant my relationship with god is something he will deal with me with later on but as far as the covenant of using my life my grace and koinonia to minister not even me can stop it that's why when elijah died the covenant was still on his bones elisha his bones still raised the dead because the grace on him was authorized to do that not whether he was living or dead that's the basis of man to transfer that's the correct basis of man to transfer that when you touch a man or shake a man you are going not with a material you are carrying a covenant to your home god stops dealing with you now based on you it is on that basis we can say the god of this when you say the god of isaac there's something about god and isaac that makes him hear you the god of jacob there's another thing 
I don't encourage people to say the God of Joshua, Selman and this, but brothers and sisters, there are covenants. There are men, God, enter the covenant with them like Joshua. No man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. He didn't say where you do well. That's the covenant. This house you see is a mystery of covenants. Covenants here and there. That's the reason why we make certain bold claims. I truly believe that if all I use is just my personal faith, I will be afraid. I have eyes. I'm a human being. You can see cases that you know are impossible, but there are higher dimensions. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. I've convinced you enough to believe that you can walk out of here free. Please lift your voice and in one minute blast in tongues. Pray in the spirit. Lord, I believe that by these two immutable things it is impossible for God to lie. Are you praying? For surely the signs of an apostle were what were wrought in patience and signs and wonders and mighty works. Listen, in one minute, please, young old, just walk with this instruction. Mention clearly the issue of concern and say, Father, visit it. Don't just say, God bless me. That's not a very wise statement. Be very exact. He said, give us this day. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Please pray passionately. Emmanuel, we want to see you. Pray. We want to hear from you, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, we want to see you, we want to hear from you. about to rise. Pray! such grace in this place such grace listen listen there are spirits you've heard me say it that tie down men there are spirits that tie down destinies there are spirits that tie down families and are responsible for the predicament of people when you come into the presence of God like this, some of you are lovely, innocent people. You love God with all your heart. But certain things are not going well with your life. Those spirits must give way. There is an anointing. Don't be afraid. Don't ask whether it will happen. It's not just your personal faith. You have believed God. That's all right. Leave the rest to Him. Whenever I call you, 
you will answer me my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you is calling you oh god take my breath oh god take my breath will you take my breath take my breath it's calling you all right we're ready let's go lift your hands I want to pray for you that every spirit and every force my God I see so many people so many people who will be delivered so many people who will be delivered I want you to bring them out the anointing is here it has come lift your voice at the count of three I want you to shout that name Jesus inside and outside I come against every spell every enchantment by the power that is in the name of Jesus that as God's people shout in the name that is above all names let every dragon crumble are you ready now at the count of three one two three take it, take it, take it, take it. my God charms 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 I'm seeing charms I'm hearing in my spirit charms bring them out charms charms Divination, instruments of wickedness, divination, I curse you, Katokata, outside, the angel of his presence, outside, sweeping like rain, that view, divination, instruments of wickedness, I command you to leave, I command you to leave, place of his power so katatata reketekete embros katalikata reketekete sheketeko katata balaba lift your hands my god my god my god listen i'm seeing something in the realm of the spirit this thing that they count there's this thing that they count one by one in the name of jesus that's what i'm seeing and the Lord is telling me that there are instruments of divination. People are about to be set free now. Lord, I don't know where they are, but like fire is visiting at least 21 people inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, let it go. I release that fire now. Help them right now. Right now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, no devil will stand it. I assure you, no devil will stand it. Whether you are inside or outside, there is grace to set you free. I command divination. I command yokes. Broken. Lift your hands and pray. I'm seeing a number in the spirit 74 and the Lord is telling me that's a number of people that must be delivered from the spirit of delay lift your voice this delay is a wicked spirit I want to pray you may not know you belong to that category is the anointing that will fish you out guys be sensitive please please in the name of Jesus 74 people Lord wherever they are I stretch my hands right now the spirit of delay at the count of three I like you to shout Jesus one two three let them go now let them go now the cause of delay the spell of delay so take it take it take it take it take it take it Delay. Hallelujah. Do 
those outside only those outside lift your hands the Lord is directing me those outside at the count of three I want you to shout Jesus first overflow second overflow and online there are certain people that will be picked by angels strong delayed spirit outside in the name of Jesus are you ready just those outside one two three I command that spirit there's fire outside it must go now it must go now leave that sister leave our destiny hallelujah Faith, faith, F A I T H. Faith. Who is faith? I'm hearing a name, faith. Are you faith? Hold on, hold on. Don't match the people here, please. Faith. This person is outside. It's a small girl. She's wearing a white something. White like white. Is there someone like that? Come. What's your name? This is the girl I saw in the spirit. I'll pray for you. Come. What's your name? Faith. Your name is Faith. Come. Where are you from? Let's hurry up. Please, if I mention your case, I don't have to mention every case. Don't worry. Our time is constrained. You wanted to make it a vigil. But we are off to Lagos tomorrow. Just faith. Let them come. Are you an usher? Usher, lift your hands. You are the first person to receive the miracle that I'm praying for. I'm looking at you and I'm not seeing an usher. God is saying he's visiting your family right now. Receive that grace. Now. Right now. Let that devil leave our family. Go. Delay. Out of our family. After that you can do your ushering work. Look at me, my dear. Where are your parents? Huh? Where is home? Where do you stay? You are faith too? Huh? Let me pray for you. Hold my hands. It's not just you I'm praying for. Look at me. I want to pray for your family. Your family is being greatly oppressed. Huh? Go and tell your parents that a man of God prayed for them. I'm seeing a family that came from Abuja. That's what the Lord is showing me. Abuja not just a person like a family that came from Abuja Father in the name of Jesus let there be a miracle supernatural miracle miracle all of you your names are faith hold on please hold your hands together um, so that we can save time we still have sick people to pray for we are going to be very fast it won't take long I want us to finish very fast tonight all the faiths I'm going to pray your name is faith too Osha you are not sure you're a worker you will receive your own differently lift your hands the lord is saying i should tell you he's giving you beauty 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 in the name of jesus beauty all the faith i'll just lay hands on one person as a point of contact to you father i don't know why they are out but may the anointing flow from this one lady right now to every one of them right now right to all of you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ so that we will save time by the power of the Holy Spirit. I see a family from Abuja. Where are you? Please let me speak to you. From Abuja. Clap for Jesus as they come. Quickly, please. Hold on. Who is sick? Who is sick? Who is sick? Chest. Your chest has a problem. Yes. You sleep in the night. Yes. And you feel as if there's something on it. Yes. This is witchcraft. Yes. But someone else is sick. I'm saying, where are you from? Abuja? All of Abuja, you? Yes. Hold on. Yes. All of you? Yes. I didn't say if you are from Abuja, please. You are a family from Abuja. Hold on, hold on. If they are here, don't push them. Let's be gentle on them. Why is he there? Okay. No, you don't have to. Those under the anointing, listen, listen. When people are under the anointing, especially for deliverance, there's a reason why they are out. Don't just lift them and push them. You can shift them. There's a reason why we ask them to come out. It's not to show they are falling. You already saw them fall there. You are the one from Abuja? Lay your yes. hands. Come. Let me lay my hands on you. You are scattered. You are all the same family? All of you? The ones at the back? Are you the same family? You are on your own? 
you would have sat down there my brother my sister two of you you are together I will pray for you what do you want God to do for you please we don't have time if you are not sure I'll just keep you aside so that we can deal with it. I need employment employment yes, sir. I need a job. Do you love yeah, God job. yes sir huh? yes sir seriously yes sir what of you I want to follow my education sir see it's not everybody I'm just speak on behalf of your family we don't have all the time I have to pray for you my brother huh? God will heal you and then for you what's wrong that I said there's somebody sick. You heard me say there's somebody sick. He's the one sick. He's having chest pain, but this one. Leave chest pain. Chest pain is not this. This one is witchcraft. It's not sickness. This. Okay. We have to pray. Huh? I'm looking at this and I'm seeing these things that doctors used to check organs of people. I'm seeing that he has a wound. He has a wound inside. And the wound is not healing. We have to pray. Father, heal that in Jesus' name. Lift your hands. I'll just lay my hands on you very quickly. My major focus is to pray for the sick. That breakthrough, we can prophesy that one. But I, I want to pray for the sick. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed, my brother. Your chest. You go and get a job. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's done. Go back to your seat. Please come quickly. Let me pray for you. It's done. I pray for you. Why are you here? Huh? God should what? Set me loose. Set you loose. Distraction. You are distracted. One, two. You are very disorganized. Look at me. Your major problem is not demonic. You are very scattered and disorganized. You need your life to get some level of order. Lift your hands. And you, you want to do ministry. You, you don't need, you, you heard me say approved, right? You settle down. You don't just run around. If you are disorganized, you will not get results. Father, grant him grace. Supernatural grace. Something is leaving you and something else is coming into you. That thing that must leave you go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I release an anointing upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Why are they here, your children? Come. What's, are they sick? What's wrong with them? This one has a heart problem. Heart problem? Yes. Oh my God. And this one has breathing. Breathing problem. They are all your children. They are, children. They are all your children. Hold them. It's you I should pray for, not them. The, the children are just reacting to something. I have to pray for you. Eh? Things are not going on well. Where's your husband? He's abroad. He's abroad. How long has he been there? Getting to here. What I want to tell you, eh, is not something I will say in the open. Are you hearing me? But uh, I pray for the grace of God. That's that's all I will say for now. Eh? And I'll pray for you because you see, any success. Let's hold my hands. Let's pray. Why are you holding our hands? You are a sister. I'll pray for you. Huh? You want to marry and what again? Are you married? Uh -huh. Marriage is one. What's the second prayer point? Job. What's the third one? Financial breakthrough. These are the three things I brought you here. There's one more. There are four. Ministry. Ministry. So there are four. I'm seeing it like that. That's why I'm telling you. Did you show me? Did you tell me? That's what I'm telling you. Marriage is number one. Then job, finance, and then you have the call of God. You're a woman of prayer and God shows you dreams. Is that true? Where's the mic? Yes, sir. God shows you dreams. Yes, and you are wondering, you don't know whether you should wait for your husband or start ministry now because that's your fear. You see the anointing is on her? That's your fear. You don't know whether you should start something now or you should wait for the man God will send into your life. And it's because you are a nice lady. You don't want to do anything that looks antagonistic to his ministry. This is, I'm hearing you discuss with a friend. Huh? And that's, so God is going to solve that problem for you. But you, let's pray. Hold my hands. Father, what God has joined together, the Bible says, let no man, whether, whoever. Man also includes woman. Man doesn't just mean a male figure. Man includes man plus every Jezebel that represents a system. And I'm using, I'm not saying your husband, are you getting me now? 
this is not something I'll say here. I want to prophesy any marriage, any couple that are married now, and there's anybody looming around to reap where you did not sow in the name of Jesus, we scatter that nonsense right now. You will hear testimonies from this thing I just this little prayer has delivered somebody right now father let there be miracles the spirit of infirmity i command it to live your life now in the name of jesus bring the children please where's the one with the heart problem uh okay look at this adorable baby heart problem heart what did they tell you he said there is a swelling a swelling in his heart hold it for me it must go down this baby now will not grow well how many of you know that the baby will not grow well you may not know what is wrong until he grows then certain things that should happen to other people will not happen to him i know a lady that i prayed for she doesn't have a womb i'm not saying it's not developed completely no womb like that usually it's these kinds of things um you know at the point of conception several things happen jesus in the name that is above all names i pray in the presence of your people this is why you sent me by the power of the holy spirit let this heart become normal now you see it you see what is happening i told you is the mother that should be prayed for i'm praying for him and see the person falling under the anointing because that's where it came from it returns to hell now I can't hold this one is big in the name of Jesus supernatural miracle see the anointing is on her too somebody come and hold her please hold her hold her God is healing the baby and healing her too. two of them hold her the anointing is on her God has removed something from your family related to this there's something you would have suffered that is related to this thing you are an usher while you held him that's why the anointing touched him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I want to prophesy on two people they will come under the anointing now please bring them out just two people right here indoors there's an anointing that is coming on two people right now thank you Jesus the, the Lord is just giving a word we're going to pray for the sick now two people you can't stand it it's like fire to come on you please bring them August is it Augusta Augusta august augusta or august something that looks august something the name augusta or augustina or something like that please anybody with that name augustine sir this man come this this fair man come your breakthrough has come there's a lady outside that august something you are outside in the overflow there is another one you are wearing chain chain like uh, this thing they wear is there someone like that not you sir you there's somebody you're wearing i want to pray uh ah. look at you lift your hands look at me shout i avoid trouble shout it i avoid trouble you are speaking english shout it i avoid troubles because I'm seeing the devil planning to really frustrate you December and we have to pray against it and this is something that is is something you are vulnerable to but in the name of Jesus no trouble by the power of the Holy Spirit no trouble in the name of Jesus you don't stop them you just guide them in the name of Jesus sir I want to pray for you God is about to change your life you are a man look at me sir two things will happen to you I say it in the open you will come and stand here look at me one Look at me, sir. A level of financial breakthrough you have never seen in your Amen. life. Amen. Amen. It's what is going to come Amen. upon you. Amen. I want you to believe it, sir. It's not just because maybe uh, I'm talking to you because all of that. That's number one. Number two is that I want to pray for you. I'm seeing a thermometer rising up and down your chest. This is BP. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. You have BP. Yes, sir. Did you tell me? No, sir. I have to pray on it. If I don't pray on it, you are going to have serious problems. Because I'm seeing you go to a doctor. 
maybe now or in the future and the doctor is specifically telling you not to eat salt salt like completely i don't know what but i think something that has not to do salt so i have to pray for you i'm going to pray for you and any other thing you came here with hold my hands sir, with both of your hands i want you to believe father there is a grace for prosperity receive that grace in the name of jesus is there is an anointing that makes men prosper look at me sir in the name of jesus i release that grace god gave it to me i pray for you again in the name of jesus that mantle and unction that can cause a man to prosper may it come upon your life in the name of jesus christ god bless you sir and bp come sir let the bp be healed now in the name of jesus huh what's your name what's his name augustine augustine augusta yes, thank you come you are the one who needs deliverance i'm going to pray for you but lift your hands i'm looking at you and i'm seeing uh now this is not death but i'm seeing you know how a place has been deserted like a wilderness that's what i'm seeing as i'm looking at you and i have to pray for you because if i don't pray for you are you married huh? no, if i don't pray for you number one you will not get any reasonable man to marry you it's all these foolish men who will loiter around and come and not be serious huh? in the name of jesus for you and your family be set free right now by the power of the holy spirit i open up those doors jane 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 you are a fair woman looks like an evil lady you are wearing a like a sleeveless jane sleeveless something like that who is that huh I'm the one. look at she's surprised you think i'm a herbalist i've been talking to people why are you looking like um one the first miracle is there's something in your stomach yes sir is that true yes did you tell me yes, sir. something is biting you physically like a snake it moves down to your breast region and comes down there yes, every day yes, sir. that's the first thing god is going to do stand up number two see she doesn't want to stand up stand up madam You are a good woman but you have suffered i have to pray for you somebody came into your life and did something i cannot say in the open you have been crying till now you gave this man everything is that true yeah right everything you gave this man he rubbish your life into zero and went away when i was preaching about mercy god was talking to you yes, huh yes. don't worry the man even said you're a fool God will use the foolish things and confound the wild. Stand up. Three. That man that appears in your dream is going to leave you now. Stand up. This, this wicked spirit. Stand up, my dear. Hold my hand. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I love the power of God. That person lifting that picture, lift it high right now the power of god will touch you lift both of your hands there's anointing coming on you right now that's it your prayer is answered it's done completely the miracle for which you are lifting that picture for completely is gone may your life turn and change like day and night in the name of jesus i close every door you have opened in your life and i command by the power of the holy spirit let there be a miracle for you in the name of jesus christ one two three four four months there is someone you're a businessman you've not done anything for four months it's like you are i don't know if it's a project you are doing or you are supposed to do something four months you have been completely grounded i don't know if you are inside or outside please run god wants to pray for you why are they here jane i want to pray for you and then we'll pray for the sick Madam, I finish with you. You can go back rejoicing. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be breakthrough for you. Let there be breakthrough for you. 
If I pray for you, please go back. If I don't speak for you, uh, upon you, it just means I'm not hearing anything else. Jane. Your name is Jane? You are the businessman. Lift your hands where you are. Just lift it there. Lift your hands where you are. I said keys were given to people earlier on. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands on you. And everyone who relates to this miracle too, may they receive it. I release an anointing upon you right now. Right now. Everyone who relates to this, in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, you need wisdom, you need strategy, and you need connection. These three things, these are the things you came for. I release upon you grace. Don't be confused. Things are about to turn around in your life. Come. You need a helper. Somebody helped you. You did not thank him. You didn't thank him and this thing has affected you. Doctor. Doctor. I'm seeing a doctor. I don't know if it's all this. Please come, sir. I want to speak to you, sir. Sorry, I'm having to call you. But the Lord is saying, I should tell you, is going to come very fast. Go and write it down. This is what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. Even me, I don't understand what I'm saying. But the Lord is saying, I should tell you, is going to come very fast. It will bring three things. One, envy. Number two, I see your superiors angry with you. And the Holy Spirit is ministering to me. And he's saying it is because this kind of speed is not common. Koinoni, I want you to witness this thing and write it. You will see it happen. Sir, I pray for you. Shade, you are a witness to what God is doing to your husband. God is going to give him such a dimension of speed. Sir, this will start from now till June 2017. You will see speed that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, do you know why you are stranded? Only one reason. You violated the law of honor. The law of honor. This is not just witchcraft. Don't, don't act as if you don't need people. You always need them for your business to rise. Huh? Why am I seeing piles of clothes? What do you do? I sell clothes. You sell clothes. Honor is what you have violated. Hold my hands. Let your business grow now. Go and excel. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. What is Abba? Well, we go to Abba too. You go to Abba yes, sir. to buy clothes there. Yes, sir. But favor has closed there. Yes, sir. The person who used to help you, something happened between you and him. Yes, sir. You didn't honor him. He was very fair to you. Yes, huh? Yes, Let me just tell you the truth. That's why I say it's the law of honor. Yes, sir. After I pray for you, he's yes. going to call you. Amen. The business will start again. Amen. Grace for you. I'm not revealing. I'm making it happen. This is not revelation. The word will make it happen. I place the word of God upon your life. And I declare that things will change. In Jesus' name. Why are you here? What's this? Project. Project. What are you doing? I want to run a school. Huh? You love children. Huh? And you want to teach. I'm seeing you doing something with a blackboard. Huh? Blackboard. Yes. Ah, you are strong. You want to establish a school. That's what I'm seeing. Nursery school, primary school, secondary school. Yes. That's what you want to do. Who told you it cannot be done? Huh? It can be done. You believe that? Hold my hands. Go and honor somebody who is already in having a school. And God will open that door for you. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, we are going to pray for the sick. Please listen. I want, this is the last miracle service for the year. I want everybody to receive there will be such a heavy mantle transfer after the prayer i just want us to in the next few minutes to finish here so i want you to please cooperate with us i pray for you you are all blessed in jesus name now please listen all those who are sick in this venue listen please this venue and uh the the overflow by the roadside I want you to just move to the front of your projector your projector screen all of you who are trusting God for a healing miracle no matter how many you are we will pray for you that's why we are here those outside move to your projector screen outside now listen part of those outside can come in not everybody a few of them maybe at the back you can come in then those trusting God for miracles here for you and your loved one now please come up 
come up quickly come up believing God come up believing God we want to do a thorough work tonight please we want to do a thorough work tonight this is what will happen now those outside is okay for those coming outside um, Pastor Jakes Pastor Jakes will help me handle the one by this pro, uh, the projector stand outside and then a Jimmy will go outside please guys let's trust God for grace for people to really get miracles hold on please people need l- let me just pray with you guys let's let's do a thorough work father grace in the name of Jesus let your healing power flow let that healing grace Lord in the name of Jesus let it work let that healing grace be at work let there be results in the name of Jesus please come pastor alpha come Benga, promise Michael come all these hands I will tell you where to in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ grace for you let there be a very thorough result thorough result thorough result thorough result thorough results in the name of Jesus thorough results pastor um, you are Michael please you can go outside and help Jake's um, Benga you and promise you can go outside there with a Jimmy please just go outside let's see I will try to handle the ones here um, very very fast we need so many more people by God's grace pastor Femi come 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 you are here and you are hiding. Come. Come and hold my hands. Let that anointing come upon your life and then you help me here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he will help me here. Jesus, we release your healing power all over this place. Listen, please. For all those who are here, please listen. By the grace of God and it's not pride. God has given we a healing ministry. God has given us grace. Please be patient. We are going to hurry up. If I don't mention your case, don't worry. I'll just lay hands on you. I want us to cover grounds as much as possible. I would have just prayed for you, but that's not the instruction God gave us. Maybe if the ministry becomes too large, we can pray. But now I want to lay hands on everyone. There are people with cancers. There are people with all kinds of things. Just trust God. Worship team, please just create the atmosphere for us. If you are tired, maybe the media can play something, a worship song so that you rest too. Especially if you want a healing miracle. Come, lay your hand on your stomach. Father, you heal her in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your voice. If if they are, if the worship team, if you are tired, then the media can play something, a worship song. Let's be very fast. Please, as soon as I lay hands on you, I want you to believe God and go back. Thank you, Jesus. Let there be miracles. Now, those of you who are, hold on. Those of you who are seated, please, I permit you to put on your phone. Call your loved ones whatever their requests are i want to pray this is our last miracle service for 2016. anything that has not been done that must be done before december 31st i want you to write it call your loved ones those online submit your request we are all going to pray thank you jesus go ahead you will do a miracle a miracle today thank you jesus Miracle Walker, you are a miracle walker. Come and do a miracle, a miracle today. You will do a miracle. Restoration, a miracle. Restoration, today. restoration, restoration. Miracle now, now. Ah! You are a miracle walker. Come and do a miracle, a miracle today. You will do a miracle, a miracle today. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Oh, your name is. 
it's all over your body this thing everywhere how long one year it just started coming hold my hands let it go now i cost the spirit responsible for this now let her go be healed now this wicked thing it disappears from your skin and lives your life forever it is done darling god bless you your name is After me, I curse every witchcraft. I curse every witchcraft from the village. From the village over my life. Over my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of that's where your problem is coming from. But I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a miracle by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Ah, Mama, something is leaving you. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave you. You're with her? Help her. Help my mom, please. You need favor in your life. And you need speed. These two things. You need favor and speed. Ah! The anointing is still on our mother. Favor and receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go ahead, guys. Your name is Yah. Oh, your name is Yahweh. Say your name is Yahweh. You are a miracle working God. Your name is Yah. Oh, your name is Yah. Hey, we sing your name is Yahweh. Hello, scriptures exalt us from the book of Proverbs. It seems like so. I tell it to my soul. In kind that is to my work. Let them not depart from my heart. And treat them in the midst of me. As we have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings there are if you are taught to this world of work. But you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstances, your heart are going to be fixed on this world. And as you have been blessed, we will call you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others and be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on God. That is going to set you on me. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.
us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.